morning, people. Happy new month. Happy Friday. Welcome to TDA, the day after. Your favourite news platform and the home of popular culture as defined by the culture. And let's get to our hosts for today. It's your boy, Six Foot Plus of Pure Temptation. Big Mars from the east side of the bridge. Morning, people. As always, your favourite shade queen, my own realty. And they call me E-Man, the pro-black activist, TDA producer and news analyst, Melanin Jam Packed. Going Welcome on, back. what's going on? This is brother Ramsey, pro Palestine activist. <laughs> back out here. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Good, I'm very grateful. Yeah. Did you know, do you guys notice anything different about Ramsey? Not his bed. Okay, you did notice then. Hmm? I just what, wondered whether men notice things. Is there or is not there? It is there. I've, oh, never, I've never seen there Ramsey with a beard. I, I, I you have, have, you yeah. have, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Never seen him with a beard. And we're all kind of matching. Like having mm. black or grey. This is true. Like that. The people with the Palestine badges are in black and grey. <laughs> <laughs> Our people. But yeah, I was thinking, do you know what I'm thinking? Well, I've been flexing on a lot this week. I'm, I'm very grateful. <clears throat> but not just for life. But I'm grateful. What happened? Oh yes, Brent. Are you in the room? Sorry. Sorry. No manners. <coughs> Is it Good morning, morning. morning. Is it working? Is it working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. working? <laughs> All right. Good morning, Teddy Tibbs. Good morning, Love Your Space. Good Ooh, morning, I like that. Um, the Love Sarah this. Amar. I hope your husband is well. I hope it is you looking after him I'm well. That's the Trinidadian guy who cooks well. Oh, good morning, girl. He's <laughs> <laughs> a good man. <laughs> um, good morning, Emma Nant. Good morning, Crud Crow. Good morning, Jen and Jess. Good morning, Christy. Good morning, Amy Snow Globe. <laughs> Morning, Good y'all. morning, Izzy Bambido. Good morning, Justine. Morning, Good morning, Paul Wall. Good morning, Vaughn. Good morning, Enoch. Good morning, David. Good morning, Dr. Armani. Oh, yeah, he is. Isn't it? Yeah, You're not yeah. such a Ghanaian name. Such a random name as well. Like, how deep do you search in the Bible to name your child Enoch? <laughs> if it's not a common name, and the only two Enochs I know are Ghanaian. Love that mm. for them. Who could Enoch be is the best? Oh, he's in the Bible. He's in the Bible. Who could say he's the best? Is the best. Say again? Cut. Went to book at Enoch too. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. How long was the interview? Three hours. Okay. How do you like, access the book of Enoch, please? Uh, on mm. the internet. Depends, depends. You can do use different channels. I uh, know. I want to use the channel. <laughs> 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 the most straightforward channel would be great for me, thanks. Okay, cool. Um, Okay, and how many chapters is it? Depends the version you get. It's plenty, Excuse plenty, me? plenty, plenty, plenty chapters. Don't, don't sip your tea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Enoch says, um, what, I really like that name now, actually, Enoch. It's grown on me. Um, that play you guys were talking about yesterday, do you know it's about interracial slave play? We shouldn't be promoting this play, LOL. Remember the yeah. one, the blacks only one? That's so the that I get played by a slave. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, big up. Uh, big up. The flipping MP that was against it. We don't know Never yet. I see the day I defend a white man. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know yet. How does Enoch know? Enoch I don't know. sources. Exactly. <laughs> to be honest, Enoch was a prophet in you the think, Bible. You think this Enoch is a prophet too? <laughs> you know. And he's just he just specializes in <laughs> TDA headlines. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, what a day, man! But how are you guys in there? I'm all right. I'm cool. Mm-hmm. Bless the tiny favoured. It's nice to see um our boy, our boy, Ramsey in. Ramsey. Mm-hmm. Always love the energy he brings. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Are you smiling for? No, I'm smiling. You know what stuck in my head? Mm. Is when I met Jean for the first time, yeah, in person. Mm. And she was like, oh, I met Ramsey before. And I still said, like, yeah, yeah, he's a good guy, good guy. And then one word came out of your mouth and you were like, terrorist. <laughs> You might just went, he's a terrorist, and just left it as that, and just was silent. A, fr- a friendly terrorist. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, on the, he's on the side of the good guys. <laughs> yeah, that's the type of terrorist you like. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about you. Um, oh, my gratitude. Yeah. Oh, yes. I, do you know what I'm grateful for? I'm grateful for the things that I wanted that didn't <clears> work out for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the things I really, really, really wanted. Yeah. Examples. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what you mean. Do you not? Sorry, I do. No. Nah. <laughs> just different things. I was thinking about different things. Um, and yeah, like relationships, 
things I that just different things in life that I really really wanted and didn't work out, and at the time I felt very disappointed by them not working out, and I just felt this very overwhelming. Like throughout this week, that's what I've been reflecting on and praying about. I just felt this very overwhelming sense of gratitude. Like yeah. dropping the ease and stuff. So again, yeah, so, yeah, even yeah, that, even yeah. that, actually, even that. Yeah, there's just so many things that you think that you want, and then when you don't get it, you feel so disappointed. But then when you're like, <clears throat> when you're through it, or when you're when you're in a different space and you're able to think more objectively outside of what it is that you wanted, you realize how that would have been the best thing for you. And I just like that God uses His brain rather than mm. mine. My mom doesn't give me everything I want. My mom used to say, when one door closes, another two opens. Yeah. I bad. You know how badly I wanted to work in Nike Town. When I was younger, I you know how badly I want to work I in Nike Town. Do you know how much discount they get? Decent, actually, to be fair. That would, actually be, that would actually be in your brands as well. Bro, I, I had met someone. He put me through, referred me. So I was like, oh, I got the job. Mm. I got it. Apparently, they said I was best suited for, because there's different departments in Nike Town. I was best suited for the Pinnacle, which is more like streetwear brands. Okay. I didn't get the job. Livid. Yeah. I remember the time when um, Nothing Was The Same came out. I was sad. But now... Because I didn't get that. Because I just remember. What's that? Listen, what I listened to the songs like sad. Nothing was the same though. Yeah, nothing it's was the same to be fair. Drake. Nothing has been the same. With Drake. Drake. Um, but no, I say that because That's now I'm, I'm happy. Me. Come back. Just brush over it. Yeah, we can't. Wait, what's your that. point? What's your point? You came here. You were out here blasting Drake. You might never get Drake <clears> on this platform on account of your ass. And what's then that? here you are. I said Drake makes good music. I just think he's unique. What? What's happening? You were barely looking forward to Drake. <laughs> Back in the day, and now you're discussing him. And I said on the same day, <laughs> I said him. I said on the same day that nothing was the same as one of my top albums. Yeah, if not the top album. That's the last time I listened to that man. They interrupt my story. Yeah. I'm trying to like live. A, a project. Mm. That's the last. Actually, that's a lie. I remember views one. It was a views after that one. Where he was on, sitting on the mountaintop, wherever it was. <laughs> no, it was on the. It was on the. the, the yeah, yeah, that one. <clears throat> and I remember I was at uni. I had just come from an all night out, and I remember he was doing like a listening party, and then. When he started playing, I said, I'm taking my ass to bed. I've been up all night. I'm what, views? Yeah, I, didn't I don't like views at all. So views is good, didn't. man. I like views. I didn't. I think Nothing Was Saying was so great for me. And before that, I'd never really been like into Drake like that, mm. like that. So Nothing Was the Same was so lit. Mm. I went to the concert. Like It was just so great. And I see him a lot as well over like that two years. You know that time when Wireless would have him and have Nicki Minaj mm. and yep. they on the payroll and whatnot. Views is good for the summertime. There's decent <gasps> songs on there still. Yeah, there's a few songs that are good in there, but it's just Pound wasn't... Cake? It's a big tune. Love Pancake. What's that? Enough was the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with yeah. um with Jay Z. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that was, that was uh, yeah, the song with that uh, Ellie Golden song for. Oh yeah. yeah. Look at Ellie Golden, man. Do you? I like her. Quite a stand Very talented. Her songs were on repeat when I used to work in Westfields. Yes. That's the thing. When you work retail, it puts your songs. It, it could be your favourite song, it will put you off. Worst. Worst. I don't know why they do that. Nah. Plus, I think it's a psychological thing to torture the, the employees. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. why can't we have a new playlist every day? There's so much music in the world and we're playing the same songs throughout the day. That's the worst thing. And you're singing it when you're at home because it's been oh. a repeat anyway. You think, you think Views is better than Nothing Was The Same? Um, I don't know. Um, what's on Nothing Was The Same? So I got and Lever, Wu Tang, Worst Behaviour, From Time, Ooh. which in the you called. Big up. tune. Big tune. Yeah. Too much. She was gonna run around that time. You know, I'm not was the same. It was a good album. Come through. All me. The motion is hard as well. Connect. How much is that today? Starting actually? from the bottom. Nah, I don't think nothing's touching. I don't think anything's touching. Nothing was the same. That's not my favorite for Drake album. My favorite Drake album's probably Take Care, but that's a that's yeah. a lot of people's no. vibe. Yeah, because I think it's the only classic album he's got. I think so far gone. It's not even an album. I think it's the best thing. Um, I like I like um, nothing was the same, you know. But I feel like I don't. I feel like I don't revisit it a lot. Okay, yeah, but it's easy with him because he's got so much. Yeah, but I yeah. know I know I play I I play songs of his. What songs though? Let me check it. Um, that one with that passion fruit. Feel away. No, passion fruit was um a different album. Passion fruit was the one with the gigs, isn't it? The album with gigs. Views. Has mm -hmm. Feel No Ways, mm -hmm. which is a big mm -hmm. track. Yeah, Feel No Ways is cold. Controller, mm -hmm. One Dance, like Grammys. Redemption's cold. And I don't like pop style. Redemption's cold, Faithful, Western Road, West, Hotline Western Blue. Road Flows. Oh, hate that song. So <laughs> got Controller and One Dance <laughs> and Grammys. Yeah, this is a decent album still. It's not touching enough, it was the same though. Fire and Desire. 
Mm, no, I don't think it's better than nothing was the same, but mm. I like the songs on there though, still. Yeah, there's definitely something you can pick out. Mm. Uh, more Life you're talking about, Esther. Oh, More Life. More okay. Life. Yeah. I heard yeah, that alone retail, so when I went to next, I had to kill myself. All right, well, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad everyone's good there. You could, yeah, you said you were good. Yeah, I'm straight. <clears throat> you man, can't complain. Thank you. Love that. Brent, you're highly favoured. Mm-hmm. And Ramsey? I'm good, man. Yeah. yeah. How do people in the chat? Everyone good as well? I hope you guys are good. Please like the video. I haven't asked y'all to do that in a while. Um, do you think actually, sorry, this is just random, just because it's come up again a few times this week and I just don't know what to do about it. So it's kind of like a dilemma. Here I am asking for a friend, that's me. <laughs> do you think that, because I'm not great at replying messages. Mm. I'm not. Like, I, I'm just not. It's stre- The thought of it stresses me out. It gives me, it, I feel overwhelmed. Not that I get that many messages. But if I have one, more than one text to reply to, it's a lot, especially with Insta DMs. Mm. Insta DMs is the worst. Like I just, I feel so overwhelmed by it, basically. But do you think that? Because I think people think people think I do it personally, like I'm being personal mm-hmm. when I don't reply to their messages. So do you think I need to let people know that like when I meet somebody? Obviously, people that are in my life now, I feel like you should just let it break up. But do you think it's something that I should be telling people? What? Like I'm not. I'm bad at communication. Yeah, why not? That's communicating. Do you think? Maybe on the first reply, when it's late. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, this is how I, I am. Yeah. I don't always use the, 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 this platform, whatever. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Because someone messaged me yesterday and they were like, I'm sorry if I'm disturbing you. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, you're not. I'm just a twat. <laughs> you're not. I'm just mean. Okay, I'm going to start doing that. Because I feel, I feel really bad about stuff like that. I can see from your face, you know. I really feel like <laughs> I feel. Because I'm like, don't, like, you're not disturbing me. Mm. <laughs> I'm just disturbed by message. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're not disturbing. I'm just not. Like, my mum, if my, if my mum has to do that, mm. she'd have to call me and be like, you didn't look at the family group chat. Da, 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 da. Like, I, I check once, maybe every two and a half weeks. Mm. I catch up. I'm the person who <laughs> reflects everything <laughs> that I've missed. Mm. Like, okay, I'll see you guys again in two weeks. I just can't. I, I just don't. Mm. But I feel bad that people feel like they might be bugging me kind of thing. Mm. Family group chats are funny. I don't understand why people do that shit. <laughs> we have four. <laughs> we have the family one with everybody, yeah. Obviously, my, man, my brother's a married man with his own family, yeah. So we've got a house one. Mm. So we've got one with everybody. Then we've got a house one. Mm. Then mom created a daughter's one before we created a house one. It's the whole thing. And I think we've got another one. I think me and my sisters have one. <clears throat> but I think me and my sisters and my sister... It's too much. It's too much. Just tell me when I see you. When mm-hmm. you see me downstairs... Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Let me, you see me in the kitchen, in the, in the common area. <laughs> Let me know what we're discussing. Have you all got family group chats? Um, yeah, to varying degrees, yeah. I've got one with, like, my brothers and my cousins. Oh, I've got cousins one as well. Yeah. To be fair, that's the only real one we've got, to be fair. Have you got one, Ramsey? I've got one for my wife's family and one for my family. What about you, Brent? What's the question? I want to do that. Oh, I can't wait to get my chat? in-laws group chat. <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> So I'm the only one. Madeline. Oh, I have that as well. In law thing as well. <laughs> You're a dickhead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one with our family group the chat? Family group chat is. I the, think they've got one. The siblings and the extended like siblings. All in the same one. Mm, not, okay. Not the parents. Okay, not the parents. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I ain't got no family group. I chat. think they've got one. I think they just didn't <laughs> put you in it. <clears throat> nah, I'm telling you now, nah, they wouldn't be. What are they gonna talk about? But that's the thing. I think they're talking about things. I think, and because when you think about it, the way you find out about what's happening Christmas, your mom just says, "Oh, just just do this." Mm. I feel like they know you're not gonna reply like that. They reply to the TDA one. Yeah, no, they ain't got a family group chat. Are you sure? I'm positive. I was just sister, please. I'm just, I'm just, I'm very curious. What the family? Yeah, they got. If they got one, it would be me, my sister, my brother, my mom in there. Maybe, maybe one of my cousins. We ain't got one. Trust yeah. me. I like that. I love that for you guys because it's a, it's a lot. Maybe. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot sometimes. Hmm. I just have people bring business lessons and shouldn't be the family group chat <laughs> in here. And I'm just thinking, you guys can do this in your private time, if we're being honest. Do you know what is? I think for me, yeah, I like the idea of bringing like cousins from back home into the group chat. Oh! oh <laughs> that border is closed. <laughs> we are not doing that. What? No, the group chat I leave. At least, least, at least no. like, there'll be like maybe two or three that obviously that you're proper close with. Yeah, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? That's so you fair. can just kind of keep in contact. But that's the thing though, because those ones, I... I'm in communication with them. Okay, all right then. Mm. I've, in my mind, when you say the, like extended back home, mm. it's a free for all. No, no, no. So the ones that I haven't spoken to, in like however, however, or I don't even know we're cousins. Shit. I will find out we're cousins in the group chat. No, I've got a funeral to go to. 
Today? No, it might be Tuesday. Oh. You need to unmute the family chat. <laughs> there ain't no family <laughs> group chat. <laughs> I promise you there ain't no family group chat. <laughs> we don't care about, like, we don't do the extended things and the extra cousins yeah. and that. The cousins that grew up in the house with me are mm. there. Like, the people, the family mm. that, family, yeah. that yeah. come to the house every day. Like, we're a real small, tight-knit mm. group. We don't, mm. We're not doing all the extra shit. And we don't care about anybody else. So, they're, they're like... I love that, bro. There ain't no group chat. All right. I, I love that. I'm here for that. Mm. Big up group chats anyway in there. Mm-hmm. Would I take them so seriously? But for you, are right though. They probably wouldn't put me in there if they did have one. I feel like you'd be like, stop with I feel like you wouldn't, you'd mute it and then one day you go in there and see like, maybe in the afternoon, you see like a hundred messages and you just go in there. You wouldn't even want to care the context and just be like, just stop this. Yeah, we don't communicate like that through text and everybody knows if they want me, they've got to call me anyway. Yeah. So it would be pointless. It'd be a pointless exercise me sitting in there. It's a okay. pointless exercise me sitting in most groups. I have not even been in that many groups. Yeah. Like, honestly, I've got the TDA group. I've got the Filthy group. There's no behavior group. And that's it. Esther, um, love your space in the chat. Has oh, asked I thought you meant you love your... my space. I was like, oh, I love your space too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll ask for your hairstylist. Oh, can you... <laughs> Do you hear me on Instagram? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> um, DM me and I'll send you her number. And I'll send, yeah, if you DM me on Instagram or Twitter. You can't DM on, no, I don't want to just, no. Um, what else can they message me on? Uh, is it easier or quicker <clears throat> for you to respond by email? You can email me as well. What about Discord? Just post it on Discord. No, because it's a phone number. Oh. She doesn't go on Instagram or anything. So oh, like, it's okay. me giving her phone number and I don't want to put her phone number yeah, out there yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um... Yeah. But if you if they haven't got social media, you can't message on YouTube. Actually I wouldn't know where to find that. Email. Email T D A phone and then I'll send it I'll send it. You get it if you message basically on something. Okay. But thank so you. Babe. Love your space. If you send an email to the day after at the new black dot com, I'll make sure that Esther gets it to you ASAP. I don't know how quickly Esther's gonna respond if it is that you actually message her as she just no, outlined it's... at the top of the show. No. If they message me right now during the show, I will reply ah, during the show. Okay. Challenge accepted. There you go. There you Challenge go. accepted. So get on your Zoom mm. so I can get on mine. Oh, yeah. By the way, you two are different. Who's different? You two. Like everyone I know wants to be text, texted oh. instead of called. Do you know what's mad? None of my people want to get called. You can't even call me either. Oh, okay. so <laughs> <laughs> my phone is on DND. What? All the time. It's uh, well, yeah. It's look right now. Do you stuff? And it's not one of those ones where you ring me twice and it goes through. No, nope. voicemail every time. Really? And I will call you back at my earliest convenience. And sometimes that is just a text saying, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't like communication. Like, oh, right. I can't. I don't know. I can't explain it. I just don't like all these things, all these gadgets, and all these things. I just can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. I don't want to be on social media. I don't want to be on anything. I just can't deal with it. It just feels very too much. And I think we've, even with like, because I think what it is, is that with phones and stuff, like, because it's such an instant, they're all instant messaging devices. There is this notion that's like, when people want to access you, they should be able to access you straight away. Mm. I don't like being accessible. Like, even with, I don't like, I just don't like it. It just infringes on my personal space, my personal aura, my personal everything. And I think with phones as well, Sometimes people feel like you because they message you, you have to reply. I don't like that that unspoken thing mm. about you have to do this thing. Mm. I don't mm. like it. I'm I'm the worst. Oh, I, you can't call me. You can't nothing me. You just have to hope for the best. Do you think you're gonna be like that forever? Yes, because it's only getting worse. Really? Yeah, it's only getting worse. I used to be very accessible. That I remember when I, I started doing Do Not Disturb and I haven't looked back. So I haven't on Do Not Disturb for years. So how was it? So like when you're, sixth form. So what do you do when you're dating? Is it the same thing? Like how would the oh, person... Oh, no, baby. Oh, you can get through to me. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, good, good. What? I was going to say. No, no. When I'm dating is... No, so when we, we, if we started talking, mm. that's how you know I like you. Mm. When you're my favourite because <laughs> you, you're cold coffee. And also, <laughs> when I reply, like, you see that your replies get quicker. Mm. All the guys I've ever dated, I've always said that. Like when we first started talking, it was like ad hoc replying, mm. and I knew when I was more invested because they would hear from me more often. Okay, so, all right. So that's, that's the only way it works. Yeah, that's like, I envy that to be honest. Yeah, I feel like I've got so much things to deal with. Like everyone, whenever any of my family members need to contact me, I'm there. Yeah. 
they text me, I'm there immediately. I'm pretty good. And you know what is? I think I think that's actually part of why as well I stopped because I've always been that person that's always there, there, there. I'm not saying it mm-hmm. has been appreciated, mm-hmm. but it sucked the life out of me. Oh, you're right. It yeah. sucked the life out of me. And I think I had a process of like grieving and stuff and I just didn't want to be contacted. And mm-hmm. I've, it's just been the same since because I've still been grieving ever since. Yeah, so. I feel like I'm... Do you know what I mean? I've still got stuff to deal with, but yeah. as soon as I'm done dealing with that, I'm going to adopt your lifestyle. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that sounds lit. It, it, honestly, I can't lie to you. It, it is. Like, I reply to things when I, when it's convenient for me, when I'm in a... There's times when I would literally... Like, my messages on Instagram will pile up. Mm. And I would just have a, just a random moment. I'd be like, okay. And I would just reply That's to everything. Mm. And then sometimes people are replying as I'm messaging. And we'll have full-blown conversations. Mm. And then that'll be it again. Quiet. For a while. But I like, I like it. It's nice. You I do that as well when you're... Because yeah. you're yeah. shit kind, kind like your that. phone. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> I try, I try. I try. It's a lot, but sometimes, man. like, so I don't forget... I leave it unread. You know what I'm saying? Because if mm. I go into it and I can't message right there, mm. I'll forget. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I do the same. But I, I should have been, I feel like I should have been more in there when people were sending pigeons and letters. <laughs> <laughs> That's more my vibe. <laughs> I, get the, I get the response in 90 days. I love that. But love your space. Message me and I will definitely message you back. But um, all that being said, let's get into our headlines, please. Oh, we've got one thing. Oh, what happened? I uh, wanted to give you guys an update on, <clears throat> remember Pulumi that came... Yes, big up Halloumi. I've been messaging her. All right then. Yeah, I messaged her the other day as well. Big up sis. She's doing amazing, man. Can I just say, mm. the Moroccans watch TDA. She had a wonderful time in Morocco. She had a <laughs> wonderful time Good. in Morocco. Hey. I said they must have. I told. I messaged. Her, I said they must have had intel mm. that you were coming and they needed to change the PR because it was not this looking good it. for them. What's so they thought that she had a good time? In Morocco she had a again. wonderful time. Really? Yeah, she had a very. What like, city this time? Oh, let me find out. Yeah, find out. Because Marrakesh. She went to Marrakesh. Is a shithole. <laughs> she went there though. I can't deny that. My mum went there. She says, yeah. I don't like going there. Yeah. I love Marrakesh. I've been there once and I want to go back. The I did meet a woman from, what is it? Agad, is it? Agadir. Agadir. Yeah, I met a woman from there. I have. I think I've lost her contact though. Oh. And she said, next time you come, stay at mine. She was so lovely. Yeah, mad hospitable. Yeah, she was so lovely. Sweet. The Blue City? Blue City. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's the place. Oh, where she went to, yeah, yeah. But that's where she went to. So, um, you know, let me go from the beginning. <clears throat> yeah. For the people who don't know, there it is. <clears throat> that's lit, man. So yeah, man. Um, what day did she come in? She came in like the day before, innit? Was it like the day before? No, she I think left? it was like two days before. Two days before. Like yeah. So yeah, man. She left. She left England. Um, on the thirty first of Jan. Began her solo drive. You know what I'm saying? She crossed over the the channel, um, via the ferry. Went to France. Straight yep. forward, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Mm-hmm. Went to Paris. Sick. Remember seeing bare pictures of her in front of the Eiffel Tower yeah. and everything. Um, then obviously from there, she, you know, found a way to Spain. Yep. Went to, um, well, actually. Got a boat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she, well, when she was in Spain, she went to the La Sagrada Familia Church in Barcelona. Okay. Um, basically, 10 hour drive to Malaga, you know. 10 hour. And then um, from there, that's when she crossed over into Morocco. Nice. That's that's our exact drive we used to do as mm. a family. Oh, she used to drive there as well? We used to do that. That exact drive takes three days, if if non-stop. Are you all in the same car? Listen, <laughs> no seatbelt in a van with no windows. In a van? Peak. One time we got there with my auntie. I've never wanted to hurt a family member so, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> the worst thing. Three days. All I had was my Game Boy. <laughs> Uh, the worst. And bear in mind, when you're stopping at checkpoints, especially in Morocco, they check if you're bringing anything illegal. Mm. So we were just sitting on suitcases and other stuff we had to bring for family members. Yeah. Well, Crazy. Same to interrupt. Okay. No, um, yeah, so basically she, she took another ferry to cross into Morocco. <clears throat> um, but apparently this was much more stressful in comparison to when she travelled from France. Mm. Um, this is due to a lack of information about the many documents that were needed, such mm. as proof of car ownership as well. Oh, really? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep, but she it's was saying. <laughs> but apparently the ferry was spacious, and she had good, um, good time, good amenities on board. I think um, it took like ninety minutes, and she pretty much slept the most the entire journey. You know what I'm saying, but then she made it into Morocco, man. Big up, sis. Um, and at this, by this point, it's like uh, been ten days of traveling. Wow. So um, yeah, she slept in a car at a campsite, mm-hmm. and. It's quite a process to get ready to drive again, apparently. Sometimes she airs it out by leaving the doors open mm. and ensures that she empties all the trash and stuff like this, mm. right? Yeah, because she's cooking in there. It's crazy, isn't it? It's a lot. 
And then that's when she then made it to the Blue City. Um, you may need to do the proper pronunciation for me. For the Blue what, City? Blue City? Blue. No. <laughs> 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 no, there's a real name and it's called, the AKA is the Blue City. So Ooh. it's um, Chef Shaunen. Chef Shaunen. Chef Shaunen. Chef Shaunen. No? Oh, you're saying the same thing? Grammy's looking at you like, what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Chef 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 yeah, that's what Possibly. I said, man. I ain't been there myself. I was even worse. You just got to pronounce your confidence. No one ever know. <laughs> <laughs> but she went there first. Um, that's where she enjoyed wandering around the streets and stuff. Oh, she nice. also met fellow f- um, travelers. Oh, who lovely. Helped her, yeah, man. Who helped to lift her, her spirits at this point. Apparently, mm. she was feeling quite down. Aww. She was missing home and everything. Aww. Then she took a rocky drive through the Atlas Mountains. Literally. Can you tell us anything about the Atlas Mountains? I personally have been there. I need to go there. Okay, There's cool. something else I need to do. I didn't travel around there in Morocco. I went via uh, other places. Okay, cool. But apparently it's like some of them them roads back home. Oh, if, if you yeah. go too quick. <laughs> up, down, <laughs> to the side. Exactly. You're, yeah, so you're she had to go quite slow because many of the um, parts of the road was just rubble. <laughs> you found yeah. them, yeah. But, um, but, uh, but uh, the views and everything was crazy. Oh, is Amazing, it? Amazing, she was saying, yeah. <clears throat> um, I think at this point in time, um, she ended up giving. It's a lovely doc as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Big up the research man that did this. Oh really? Big, mm-hmm. up, big up y'all. This uh, is thank it. you. Big okay. up Brent. Love you. <laughs> Brent didn't do this. <laughs> this guy. Because anyway, <laughs> it doesn't look like my work. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like my work. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen a doc <laughs> like this from you. <laughs> 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 Fair enough. You're so silly for that, you know. <laughs> They're <brand new> news. <laughs> um, then she got to Marrakesh and she visited the hospital in Marrakesh to check her eyes oh, um, yeah. and everything. Apparently, they've been hurting for wh- oh, quite really? a while, yeah. Mm. Oh, the like concentration and stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was difficult to find the hospital. But after paying about £24, which is like 300 dirhams, mm. um, well, uh, she received some medication to ease the discomfort and she mm. was cool, man. Oh, good. Then she headed to the Sahara Desert. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, man, she drove through the Sahara Desert in her Peugeot 206, you know what I'm saying? With the car. Yeah, man. And obviously the main priority at that point is just staying hydrated, you know what I'm saying? The heat is crazy. Um, but yeah, but this part of the journey was very significant as it really hit home, the <coughs> magnitude of what she was doing, you know what I'm saying? Being in that vast desert, you know what I'm saying? But then she got to her next border and it's where she crossed over into Mauritania. Question, I, mm. with the desert stuff, is there like a, tr- a track, like a road? And is it just... Vastness of emptiness, just either side of it. Mm, that's it could be hella isolating, man. It that's, must that's, be. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is the case. But there's places like that in America. Is that, that, that is been? true. Yeah, like in the middle. When you go to the flats and that. When you go in the flats, Texas. the, the flats. Nevada. Yeah, the flats. Yeah, thank you. It's just, it's just Las Vegas. It's just, you just, yeah, yeah, it, it looks sick though. I'd love to that. Obviously, it probably will feel road different road. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it will feel different to being in the desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, the kind of the remoteness, the similar, yeah. the similar. I've driven there. Uh. I'd love to drive there, man. I'd love it. I've been, I've been with that. I drove from, oh, well, in a. In I might a do thingy. a trip for America. Oh, sick. I decided yeah. to, I went from not wanting to go to <laughs> thinking maybe I should just spend a month over there sick. and just go everywhere. Mm. Sick. I'll do a doc like this if it is that you do that. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Mm. I believe you as well. Mm-hmm. Will you commit to the stories and stuff? Huh? <laughs> you know I'm not good on social media, man. <laughs> no, but I probably would have to, innit? Mm-hmm. Just so you don't know my life. Is one of your, your <laughs> men them good with that stuff, though? You can just rely on, rely on them to do it. How are they going to do it on my phone? Oh, if they're with you, then they can just record something. What do you mean? Oh, that's true. Be on board. Just signing out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I would just do what you asked me to do. <laughs> So where yeah. is she now? She is, apparently she's just left Mauritania. And where's she going? Um, I'm not too sure yet. Well, where's she heading to Lagos? <coughs> yeah, 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 Lagos yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. But she doesn't tell people where she's 
about yeah. to be at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's usually delayed. When she gets that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the most recent thing, I well, checked, who's, I checked well, this who's morning. Who's going to the feds? Like, what are you talking about? Someone it's tweeted that the other day. Do you know what? Sorry. No, one, one second. <laughs> yes. One second, because you're an egg. Someone, so basically, Tony Tony yeah, tweeted that the other day about never, she said, when you see stuff from me about being somewhere, mm-hmm. it's never in real time. So I think she tweeted about being in Houston. Her and the man are just so gorgeous. Real life Barbie and Ken. But anyway, she was like, if you if I tweet my location, I've left. Mm. Oh, one second, Brent. Just one second. So she was like, you, it's never going to be in real time. And someone mm-hmm. was like, you people act as though people are looking for you, da 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 you just lot, yeah, mm. especially with social media, you don't have to be a celebrity or be flipping Kim Kardashian mm. to not put your info where you are where you are out there. I don't do it. No, I hear that. It's hella psychos. Yeah, and some people just got delusions of grandeur as well. No, because <laughs> if you look at your um sometimes if you look at people that watch your stories, yeah, there's people that don't follow you or anything like that, yeah, but they consistently watch your stories. Mm-hmm. For me, I think that's freaky because why are you here? And it'd be like mm-hmm. a like a weird account. Not like a, it's like someone's burner account. You can never, I always say, I don't care, even if you even if you think that you're nobody, never ever put on the internet where you're literally at. Yeah, but why it's though? It's weird. Because anyone... even in real life, in real life, yeah. Because yeah, what can happen? Anyone can get stalked. Anything can happen. Anyone yeah. can get stalked. Yeah, because actually someone, put, someone to get so under the thread, someone replied with um, statistics of st- how stalkings and stuff like that happens. And I think, I, can't, I don't want to make it up, but stalking is such a normal thing. Like it's very, very common. Yeah, man. I don't play that game. Come by the blood of Jesus, but also Jesus said have sense. So, <laughs> what were you going to say, Brent? <clears throat> oh, I forgot. Um, all that glitters in the gold, maybe? I think. In relation to what? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, Where? Yeah. Here. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> we got Pulumi, though. That's mm-hmm. absolutely amazing. Uh, just a l- last bit. Basically, uh, on getting to uh, Mauritania, at the Moroccan land border, she had to go through like three different checks, right? Mm. They completely emptied her car to do like a thorough search and even had sniffer dogs present. So kind of like what you were saying, in it, making sure she ain't, you know, doing certain things. Um, here, she had to turn up her charm to avoid an extra three hours at the border. Uh, but overall, it took her about four hours to get through. Um, she arrived in Mauritania, which is the 81st country she's now visited. 81 mm. countries, crazy. She had to drive through no man's land as well, which is like a lawless region with no government. So with the help of a guide, she was able to get a visa and police clearance at the border. Nice. But yeah, man, she, she's done amazing. And obviously, um, if you look at her stories right now, you see that she's basically leaving Mauritania. Not too sure where next, but that's what she's done so far, man. So amazing, amazing. That's absolutely amazing, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm so annoyed. <clears throat> was it, did I say this to Brent? I think I said it off air and I was saying how I'm so annoyed. We forgot to ask her if she's coming back. <clears throat> she ain't driving back. I feel like we. I feel like we did. You know? I think she's flying back. Is she? Is she going to Dubai or something? Yes, yes, That's yes, yes. Yeah. She is going and to then, Dubai. Actually, yes, yeah. she's going to Dubai after. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, but big up her, man. Like, yeah, 100%. I'm so proud of her. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of the support she's receiving, the way her following is growing, everything. Like, yeah. I don't know this. But I just need Persia to just gift her a lovely car. Mm. That's all we For need. Real, man. Yeah. Isn't it? Keep tagging them. Um, I spoke to her earlier this week, and mm-hmm. um, she said she's like she's definitely going in mind if she can get definite um, stable internet connection. Sick. She'll call in live on the show. Oh, I love that. And then we'll get an update. Oh, that'd be amazing. So, yeah, man. Oh, big up Pulimi, though. Big up you, sis. Every time. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get into our headlines, please. Costco. Um, I think the nearest one is... Check on Google. Yeah, I should, I should do that. Thank it's you. Wolf- I think it's the nearest one. You're welcome. Is it? Yeah. Do you want yeah. Costco specifically or something like Costco? Oh, Costco. I don't, I don't want to <laughs> Costco anything like I want the brand I said. If I didn't test it, I'd as the down the road. Excuse me. <clears throat> but what did you say, sorry? I thought you said Costa. No, 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 Costco. All right, cool. Yeah, I think it's like Wolfram Store, Edmonton size. The one in Chingford? Yeah, that's the one. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So our first headline, which is Sunak has announced. He's an egg. <laughs> Someone in his family's village is playing games with the, with the um, voodoo doll they made of him. Mm. Wait, as, in, as in, like, they've opened up the headspace part and they've emptied out the, what's it, the stuffing in it. <laughs> so it's just empty. <laughs> Sorry, as you Well, were... let's, let's give him a chance to, no, to explain no. himself. I can say no. Give him a he's chance. Not elected. He's not even our elected official. He's done. Because listen to his because... foolishness. <laughs> 
Are we talking about the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Because it's just come up on them. <laughs> Definitely are. One hundred percent are. Rishi Sunak has announced mm. that Jewish schools, synagogues, and other community centers are to be given an additional fifty-four million pounds for security. Yeah. What? Yes. The yeah, land because right. he lives. In a land where people are losing their jobs left, right, centre. In a land where homes. nurses are going food banks after work. Where the wind is pushing everybody back <laughs> and <laughs> they have no heating. This is where the money... That's why we didn't have money. Let's Wonderful. Give, let's give him a chance. He's how a how, how, big, big, how big is the Jewish demographic in regards to voting? Okay. Because this is this sounds like... He's politicking. Mm. But you know... Mm. What? No, you know, I'm what? trying. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. nothing to say. You got your badge on. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, what I was going to say pretty much, right, is that, remember, it's not necessarily the size of the demographic, but the impact that particular demographic can have in an everyday life. Oh, so such as the donor has more... Oh, right, okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So it's still he's still politicking. Oh, for sure, yeah. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, man, in a bid to tackle the utterly sickening, these are his words, rise of anti-Semitism seen in recent months, the Prime Minister announced the funding which will provide security guards, CCTV and alarm systems at Jewish community sites. The new funding for the CSD, the Community Security Trust, is to provide extra security until 2028. <laughs> but what right? bring up Islamophobia, yeah? <laughs> That's next on the agenda. Uh, we'll find out time. Uh, <laughs> And this will add to an overall security package of £72 million. Pounds. Nuts. So the Home Office previously allocated £18 million pounds to the charity for the period of 2024 to 2025. Speaking at the CST's annual dinner on Wednesday, Mr Sunak said that the rise in racist attacks meant that the whole fabric of our nation is under threat. He also said it's shocking and wrong the prejudice, the racism that we've seen in recent months. That Hamas attack, attack pardon me, of October 7th was the most abhorrent act of terrorism against Israel that any of us have ever known. Next headline, and um, the Workers' Party of Britain candidate, George Galloway. You like George Galloway? I did until he done that thing on Big Brother. What are you doing, Big Brother? Oh, what, a parent on it, you mean? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he went on Big Brother and he acted like a cat. And he was like drinking milk off some other woman's hand. It was a wild, wild video. Is it? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> Well, he he's won the, um, the Rochdale by-election, man, by almost 6,000 votes. Cool. So the former Labour and Respect Party MP, whose campaign focused heavily on Gaza, overturns the Labour majority with 2,335 votes. Galloway addresses addressed the Labour leader um, in his victory speech by saying, Keir Starmer, this is for Gaza. You know what I'm saying? In response, the party says, Galloway only won because Labour did not stand and apologizes to the people of Rochdale for being unable to field the candidate. <clears throat> Remember, this is the same place where they had that guy, Ali Azhar. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Galloway. <laughs> enjoy. It's a wild video. Oh, enjoy. <laughs> it's a wild video. It's <laughs> <So> African parent. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> but yeah, man, the second Gosh. place was a guy called um, David Tully. He was an independent. He came second with 6,638 votes. Um, yeah, voters went to the polls on Thursday to choose a new MP to represent the Greater Manchester Town following the death of Sir Tony Lloyd last month. Um, Labour, obviously, like I said before, reacted to the by-election result by apologising to the people of Rochdale for being unable to field a candidate. And obviously they're saying that's the only reason why he won. George Galloway, they said, is only interested in stoking fear and division. As an MP, he will be a damaging force in our communities and public life. That's what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Labour uh, will quickly select a new candidate for the upcoming general election, is what the spokesperson said, adding that the party wants to deliver the representation and fresh start that Rochdale deserves. And our last headline, Sadiq Khan. So he called up, man. He, this guy was on smoke, man. He called up LBC and he said he was appalled and heartbroken about Islamophobic comments being made against him. He accused Rishi Sunak of being a weak leader, saying that the PM should be bringing communities together, but instead he felt let down. Mr. Sunak has had several opportunities to deal with the issue, but has chosen not to. That's what the mayor said. He also explained that Sunak is weak, like I said, because if he did the right thing and called out this man for what he said and what he is, then it begs the question, what about brave men? You know what I'm saying? So that's what he's trying to say. What about the other members of the Conservative Party? He's a weak leader, and for the next few weeks and months, we'll have more of this. The consequence of that is it normalizes hatred against Muslims. Do you feel like it does have normalized hatred? It's, it's been normal. 
No one, yeah, no one cares like about no one cares worse. about Islamophobia. People can say whatever they want about mm. <clears throat> about people in that faith. Um, he's right. I agree mm. with what Sadiq Khan said because what Lee said is nowhere near as bad as what Suella Braverman said, mm -hmm. and also it adds to the fact that the conservatives are now just doing what's the word? What's the word? Um, what's it when they just creating random fights like commentary. I can't remember what the word is. But anyway, mm -hmm. Lee Anderson said that the Conservative Party have no other no other um, arguments to put out to mm -hmm. vote for them. So they're just going to stoke arguments. I can't remember. There's a certain... I think it's like social commentary or something like that. Okay. So he said they're just going to focus on that. And if they're sure to stand with the people that usually votes for them, mm -hmm. because if they don't, mm -hmm. and they do say it's Islamophobic, they're going to lose a lot of their voters to the Reform oh, Party. The culture wars. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, so they're just going to stoke culture wars mm -hmm. so they can retain the voters that would move to the to the reform. Was mm. it, was it um, Reform Party, right? The new Nigel Farage party. Oh, is he sure? The no. new UK. Reform UK? Yeah. Is that the one? Okay. So they're just all going to go there and I, I agree with them. And mm. No one gives a shit about Islamophobia. No mm. one, anything to do with... No, never mind, man. I'm like, I'm about to go crazy. <laughs> I'm about to go crazy. Because there's money going into... Mm. There's money going into anti-Semitism. Mm -hmm. But then when people are getting um, accused of grooming and raping, uh, sorry, trigger warning, and then it turns out that the girl made it up, no one cares about that. Mm. No, no, one, no one says anything about that. Yeah, it's just nasty, man. It's nasty. Well, I hear you, man. That's it for that light. <laughs> Let's get into what you're saying, tip of the day. All right, so today's topic of the day. Brent, if you don't mind, yeah, can you put up a poll for this, please? Um, <clears throat> a black only night. I know we kind of touched on it, like, literally for, like, one minute yesterday. But let's look into this properly. A black only night at a theatre. Is that racism? <laughs> for one night Is that only. racist? <laughs> well, two, two. <laughs> let's be accurate. <laughs> two days. <laughs> As in, if it's actually... Um, um, like pushed as a black only night. Yes. So we've got, th let's just say it's like 30 days of normal showings. Two days is a black only night for people to be free of the white gaze. And they're going to be turning away anybody that isn't black. See, this is, this is That's where, crazy, this is where that stuff gets into it. All I know is it's a black only night. So I, I'm not too sure if they're going to enforce it like that, but they are letting people know black people, this is your night. You know what I'm saying? Only you. That's how it is. So, yeah. Guys, what do you think? Ramsey? <laughs> <laughs> um, how, if, if the roles were overturned mm -hmm. and it was a white only night, mm -hmm. would it be racist? So you're, having asking, whole, you're, you're having a I'd, white only century. I don't have a horse in this race, in all honesty. <laughs> I don't, I don't have a horse in the As in you can't state your opinion? Because you're not... No, that's not what I said. I said I don't really feel too strongly about it. I feel like if, I, from what I know, the play is about slavery, right? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to read um, somebody's commentary about it so that at least we can all What's be on the same What's the question I should ask for the poll? Is the black only night racist? Yes. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, this actual play was done in America already from like 2018, 2019. It's being brought over to the UK, right? And by the way, this is the most Tony nominated play of all time. It's, it's called Slave Play. And um Slave Play. Slave Play, yeah. Um, directed by Robert O'Hara. This play is about race, identity, and sexuality in 21st century America, right? Uh obviously it's gonna feature an all uh, a great cast, this and a third. Um, so this is what the playwright said, yeah. His name's Jeremy O'Hara or yeah, Jeremy O'Harris. He said this play has been part of me for many years now. It was a play written for my friends, actors like myself, who felt undeserved by the options available to them to explore the unspoken terrain of both American history and our collective unconscious in relation to those histories. It was a play written for my friends in grad school who were rarely given a chance to be sent to stage. It was it was written thinking that this, that the the Eisman stage was my university's black box theater would be its first and final home yet five years later we have been off broadway on broadway and all over america and now in london many of the people from the very first reading in my grad school flat have been with the play ever since and are returning to it in london it's one of the great honors and gifts of my life that it has made it here 
I did not take it lightly that this play is one of the rare plays by a black author that has made its way to the West End. I'm incredibly grateful for the trails blazed by the myriad of black British writers recently who have um, <coughs> broken ground for black writers and audiences on the West End, like Arinze Kenne, um, Kwame Kwe Arma, um, Terrell Williams, a bunch of other people. Um, I hope that this uh, production, even I hope that with this production, even more work by writers of color will find support on our largest commercial stages. So that's basically where he's coming from, right? What's the play about? Okay, so Slave Play follows three interracial couples um, who have put themselves forward to a new and unique form of therapy, antebellum sexual performance therapy, right? This is because the black partners no longer feel sexual attraction to their white partners. So that's, that's, what that's about. this is what it's about. But yeah. I know you need the white people in there. Hmm? Is it okay? Is it the interracial relationships? Yes. Interracial couples, yes. Interracial couples. Yes. And the black people don't feel sexually attracted to the white people anymore. Yes. In the in the in the play, yes. So then the white people should be allowed to see it. No, they're allowed to. Remember, it's 30 days. <laughs> it's just two days. Two it's days. It's only the two same days where it's like black people come and we can. You know what right. I'm saying? What is, what's this, the, what's what the need for that then? Well, okay, let me read that next thing. So basically, there will be two blackout nights on the 17th of July and the 17th Could of September. Blackout? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which is a concept developed by him, right? Mm. During Slave Play's um, Broadway run in 2019. On these nights, every seat in the theatre will be occupied by an all-black identifying audience, allowing <clears> theatre goers <throat> to experience the show free from the white gaze. Do you know what I hear it though? Because mm -hmm. if I'm in an interracial relationship and, and I take my white partner and I'm not really attracted to him sexually anymore, he's all there, all hot and bothered. I can't even enjoy the play in peace because he's out go. here taking on <laughs> the poor actor's, you know, problems. So is it for black people that only partake in a relational dating then? No, it's for everybody. <laughs> it's for everybody. everybody. <laughs> I think it should be for them. I think it should have been for the black people in interracial relationships. To be able to be away from the white gaze of their partner who's causing them the problem. Mm. That would have been a great concept. Because <laughs> why am I in it as a black person that dates only black men? Yeah, if you only date black, but, but like, why, what, 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 what's the white gaze? Like, what is the gaze doing? I, I if that makes sense. What are they gazing at? I think it's what more so. You, you know how sometimes you may be in a certain space, right? And I guess certain people may feel uncomfortable to, to really express themselves. But there, it's like just black people. But it's all about I can interracial be myself. dating, though. Yeah, yeah. but you know what it is? You know, like we have slave movies, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is uncomfortable in the situations? In the in the obviously black people don't like seeing slaves anyway. Mm. But in that situation where there's a massa, yeah, a white massa, yeah, the white people in the cinema are the ones that feel uncomfortable. So, what are you saying that they should on the slave movies they should have all white night? No, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it, not me. No, no, no. <laughs> but I'm saying we don't like. There's no gazing situation. Like no one cares about the gaze there because y'all did that at one point mm -hmm. in time, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I did that at one point in time. So with like, I don't see what gazing is going to be happening in for this play. Mm -hmm. That like, people can't just sit. It's uncomfortable for everybody. Yeah, I don't know what you're presenting for. What they need a safe space for. Yeah, like... it's not solely black. The whole concept of the thing is three different interracial I, dating. I think... I mean, interracial relationships. Yeah. They have an unpopular opinion about... I think it's just a case of... You know how, obviously, like there's, there's certain things where black people together, you say certain things. Certain people are comfortable in those spaces to be themselves. They see okay. it as family. And here's but my But when my, my white babes is here or my white husband is here... I have to kind of temper some of that. You know what I'm saying? So well, here's the truth, though. Mm. Here's my truth. I don't know. Maybe we can do a survey one day. <laughs> see it, how else? <laughs> Sometimes in certain spaces where it's black, black only audiences, mm. I like people to shut up. <laughs> I like people to shut up. And I wish the white people were in the room. Because the white people were in the room, some of you care about how you look at white, how you appear <laughs> to white people. I'm not trying to hear all sorts of ad libs and cheerings and also mm. shut up. We're in the theater. Oh, in the cinema, let's be me. Everybody on mm, me. Mm. So, I'll be real with you. I'm going to go on the nights <laughs> where the white people are involved. You have not with that. That's, that's the, okay, you know what? Even if we choose to go and we go where everyone's allowed, right? On those days where it's just for us, mm. do you feel like that's maybe a nice experience to be like, okay, you know what? This is something that's very candid, you know what I mean? For, um, that relates to us, mm. right? And it's us. Like in terms of um, the show itself, it's us being on the end of I'm not attracted to my white partner. Do you if know it was solely about the black experience, I could 
That's what I think that he's trying Word. to push. That's what I was going to say I think as well. I think it's, I think it's, it's a subject matter though. Not only, but I think um, it's about the black experience from, as in the perspective of the black experience. Yeah, but it's a subject matter. I think I think it was a thing. See how when Black Panther came out? Mm. How people were like, people, black people were so happy to d- go and da da da, everyone was dressing wherever they wanted. There's like a, there's this feeling of like empowerment and the feeling of like togetherness and whatever else there is. Mm. Obviously we know, we, to be fair, we play the theater and stuff. Black people are not really in that space like that. That's how you got the right brothers. Do you know what I mean? I, I get it. I understand that. But the subject matter doesn't call for a black only audience, in my opinion. Mm. Because your partner, your interracial, your white partner, like my partner would know, if I had a white partner, he would know mm-hmm. that I'm not very sexually attracted to you because the sex has gone down. Mm-hmm. So when we, if we go and see the play together, mm-hmm. he's not going to be finding out any new thing that he didn't know from the fact that we haven't had sex in six months. Remember, you may say certain things in a particular way because you don't have his feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but on the show, <laughs> it may just be there. Yeah, but he's going to be allowed to see from day three That's with true. me though. That's but true. Again, is it like a play that requires the audience to participate? If it's a thing where they're going to throw the mic at the audience mm. and be like, what's your black experience being with? Mm-hmm. I can understand that. Like, yeah. you, can, you, can, you, can, you need a safe space to express yourself without your partner's eyes gazing mm-hmm. into your heart. I get that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if it's just them watching a play, and this play is a play that's going to be seen by the other half of your interracial couple, yes, mm-hmm. it's, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't see, I mean, I, it's not giving racism. Mm-hmm. I'm never, I, it's not giving racism to me. Okay. I just don't see what, mm. in this situation, I just don't understand what, why the white gaze would mm-hmm. be a factor. I didn't okay. think there'd be a white gaze to be protected from in this scenario. Okay. If you're with a inter- if you're in a interracial relationship, you live with the white gaze. Yeah. So I don't. I just. I think I just. I'm just not seeing what the effects of the white gaze, if there will be a white gaze in this room, would be. Do you feel like in? So if anyone in the chat gets it, maybe we're missing something. Please call yeah. up or Discord up. <laughs> and do you feel like? Because obviously, like. Everyone's relationship is different and stuff, right? Yeah. But again, I'm a, I'm definitely making a big generalization here. But do you feel like every black and white relationship, both people are free to be themselves with each other? I think in every relationship, I think people can be free. As it pertains to race, though. That's what I mean. Okay, so interracial relationship, are people all the way free with themselves? I would hope so. But people aren't. But even in normal relationships where they're the same race, people aren't. So I don't think it's necess- it might necessarily be a mm. black and white problem. Because even in an all black and all white, uh, Hispanic mm-hmm. relationship, people are not always all the way free with their partners, which is crazy. But This might be a silly example, but imagine you've got a black and white couple together, yeah? And something comes in the news. Yeah. George Floyd, for example. And the black man is like, oh, these white police officers just talking reckless, right? Cool. Because he obviously feels the pain of George Floyd and black people in America. But then he has a cup, uh, a partner who, for example, in her head is thinking, but why didn't he just, like, you know what I mean, uh, not resist? She doesn't want to say that because she's thinking about the situation. But in her head, she's trying to see it from a rational lens. It's like, wait a minute. But he's been resisting for like 20, like, I don't know, nine minutes. Yeah. Why didn't he just relent? You know what I'm saying? So this is what that, the white partner's thinking. Yeah, I'm just giving an okay, example. Yeah, yeah. So Im- imagine that's the, the sort of thing I'm, I'm kind of talking about where mm-hmm. you can be free, but you can't necessarily be free to say everything you want because you're scared of what may, you know, come back to you. But you know what it is though? For me, obviously, the way the way I see relationships and the way I feel like relationships relationships should be going, mm-hmm. that is something I would be able to talk to my partner about. Okay. Like if I was in an interracial relation, interracial relationship, that's something that I will express. Like I think it's sad that people can't, they feel like they, people can't express themselves wholly like that in relationships. Mm-hmm. But I still don't know that this, the all black knight, the two black knights mm-hmm. is needed for such a safe space. Because again, if it's an interactive play, I understand that. Yeah. But if it's just you watching this play, where do you need safety from? To be fair, I was, I was thinking the exact same thing. I was thinking if it was me. No, was I was like, thinking this whole idea of like, Saying be being able to create safe spaces and stuff like that, like it's just a language, like it don't mm. it's like safe from what? <laughs> you said BP, huh? BP. You said BP, black people. Did I say BP? You did. You, you did. You out here, BP. That's so interesting. You know, like, yeah, because you're like BP. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was waiting to see. 
I like, know a the benefits of BP. BP. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. I realize. Oh my goodness! Are you rapping and not realizing? I, don't <laughs> I, don't know. I just don't understand the need to like the need that like, the even, like the language safe is like mm. when a safe space is for when there's when you're at risk of something. A safe space should be the you know what I'm trying to say. Not necessarily risk, but more so fear of what may come back to you. Okay, yeah. fine, but again, this would make perfect sense to me if it was an all black cast. It was the total like that mm. about the black experience and you're saying you want a safe space to get your shit off without mm-hmm. any judgment because only black people are really going to be able to relate to the black experience mm-hmm. yeah fine mm-hmm. go off it's, it's about interracial they, the whole concept of it is yeah. about yeah. mixing yeah mm-hmm. i don't see the need i don't know what safe space for that night is i don't mm. like i don't understand the concept yeah. of it i don't get why you would need even if you were going to go that. and watch it why mm. would you need to go and watch it on the night with all black people you can watch it any night. Yeah. What's the difference? What's, the, what's going to be the difference in the experience? That you, like, because I don't understand. What do you want to do? You want to be able to sit down and chat shit about white people or your white partner? Well, you can't because it's a play. You have to be quiet anyway. I, but it's about interracial date. Like, if I don't get it, I don't, I don't get know it. what the need for the. Yeah, I don't, I don't get. get I don't get what the need for the space is. You, you know, sometimes in some yeah. theaters, even though you're not like meant to be interacting with them, people do cheer, people do clap, people Annoyingly, do. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I, I think that might be. You know what I mean? Ooh, part of it as well. Question. Are the prices, so I can't read that name, was it Prince Stream? Are the prices different on the two safe spaces? Okay. <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think so. And the normal days. I mean, to be fair, there's no, there's no, um, there's no information on that. Because you know what it is? What Mark said is what I, originally, when you originally reported on this the other day, yeah, mm-hmm. I thought it was a play on black experiences and blah, blah, blah. But I also felt like, even with that, I got it. Mm-hmm. But I also felt as because... I thought maybe there were some stats where it's like, as a black person, you're less likely able to get tickets to the theatre. Okay. Or like, even the prices thing, the person's but you're less likely to be able to afford. So this is a thing of like, yeah. to encourage, I thought it was to encourage more of us into the theatre. Mm-hmm. But this doesn't sound like it's to encourage more of us into into watching plays. Mm-hmm. It just sounds like it's, but I need to, maybe we can ask, let me ask chat something. <laughs> why, why would you need a safe space to discuss interracial relationships when you're in an interracial relationship? If you're in, 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 in one. What what if you're not in one though? What if you just want to go there and, and view it? Yeah, then you can go. I will go any day. I'm, as someone who's not in an interracial relationship, mm. whatever matters to discuss here has got nothing to do with me. I could have <laughs> Becky and Harry sitting next right next to me, white guys, mm-hmm. and I would not care because it's, a, it's got nothing to do with me. I'm here for the entertainment of this. I'm really struggling to understand why they need this, and I think this is sometimes respectfully this is some, this is part of the problem. Sometimes mm. is that we do this thing. Of this or black, black own this, black this, and black, 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 black. Black has become such a buzzword that now, even when there's no relevance, mm-hmm. there's. Sorry, it's very cold. Even when there's no relevance, mm-hmm. there's. What's it called? You're just throwing in black only two nights in a row. Like, what's the relevance? When we start, when we throw black as a marketing tool, there needs to be a relevance. Black mm-hmm. owned businesses, there's a there's some kind of relevance there. Black Pound Day, I understand that. Yeah. Black this, I understand that. But. Having a, a flipping play about interracial relationships mm-hmm. and they're only allowed black, I don't understand it. Do, do you not think, uh, to be to be fair, yeah, I feel like it is kind of difficult to kind of assess everything like holistically because obviously we haven't seen the play. There may be certain things in that play that is discussed or shown that would be like, okay, cool. If it was just black people here, I understand. Do you know what I'm saying? cast members. Yeah, but remember, they, they may have s- s- such a small role. That's true. Well, then, no, but they're not allowed on the first two nights. <laughs> We don't need for your services no, on the third day. <laughs> Good morning. I, imagine, yeah. What, 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 what's Good again? Well, what's yeah. again, yeah. Ima- imagine now, you're, for example, um, this is a show about your life, for example. You're going through life, right? From here to maybe filthy or whatever. Obviously, there's going to be other people from different races playing roles, mm-hmm. but it's all about you. So, for example, the, the whole show could be about the black people with their partners. Partners are just there to just make it clear that, yeah, I'm with a white person, but it's really about them. You know what I'm saying? So that perspective might be why they feel on certain nights it would be good to have just black people here. You know what I'm saying? Someone Again, said. If, if, every, if, if, if you're, a, I don't understand why you would even need to feel the need to go there. If you say you're, if you're a black person that only dates within your race, mm-hmm. what's the need for this black night for this interracial? I can't even relate to this play, this show here. This, this ain't got nothing to do with me. All right. Caller. Who are we speaking to, please? Uh, Black Rob. Morning, guys. Morning, morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? You know yeah, so... Call the line, bro. You should be on 
Discord. Yeah, I know. I'm. I was driving, so I just parked up. I forgive you. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. So I forgive you. Uh, <laughs> um. So I think basically with stuff like this, I think it's because a lot of people in the entertainment industry are very left leaning, and there's a lot of language that they're using and tactics that they use for um. You know, there's like this whole oppression Olympics thing that we do, especially people that are really, really left leaning. And I feel that what they do sometimes is that they go, oh, um, and you even see this in movies and like you can, you can go even further than this. But like they'll go, oh, this is a story about a black experience. So we need the writers to be black. We need the actors to be black as well. And then the audience, um, this is a they use stuff like words like safe space, even though there's no danger. And then they'll go. They 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 um use a lot of tactics to basically shame people into 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 subjugation because in reality it's a it's an entertainment piece everyone should be able to watch it and um I I do believe that like a lot of the times with these type of things they'll use like yeah use the same language they stay space and all that type of stuff because they wanna um basically um. Uh, they they want to they want to curate their audience for a specific type of people, but in reality, it's that it should just be whoever's entertained should come and watch it. And that's a big problem with um, the entertainment industry in general. And it's seeping into even like stuff like plays now, where the 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 um, the political agendas of the people writing these these content um, supersedes the entertainment value of the content. So they'll be like, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to make an interesting play for people to watch. I'm making an interesting play that speaks to my worldviews, and I only want certain certain people to be able to watch it. And I'm like, well, first of all, that's not good. That's not. That's not. That means the product's not going to be the best it can be if you think like that. And two, you're probably not going to make as much money. And this is a big issue with stuff like Disney and stuff like that. You know, Disney's like they, they've had like their worst like couple of years, and their their share prices have dropped and stuff like that because. All they kept making is, you know, that whole thing of go work or go broke. All they kept making was content that was, um, that was about like, um, oh, um, uh, Miss Marvel. Do you know that like, the Indian Miss Marvel? We're gonna make it Indian Miss Marvel, and then it's gonna be set in India, and then the screen, the writer is gonna be the the uh, first time director that's Indian, and and it's about a specific story, and then the, it'll flop because they didn't pick the best person to write it. They just kind of, and I'm digressing a little bit, but it, I think it all speaks to the same thing of like really super left-leaning people taking control over the entertainment industry and then pushing their own narratives as to how things should go in the industry and then because it's not a meritocracy you get silly stuff like oh i want a black only play i want my um i want i want everyone in the in the back end of production team to be a certain um uh, gender or race or this or that and then you don't get the best product oh. yeah i hear you black obia yeah, but th- again th- that would kind of be more um relevant for creating the product you know what i'm saying like as far as he's concerned he's got the best white person white people for the role the best black people for the role he's the back um uh writer as well this is just about the audience the people who are going to yeah but it spills into that as well it's like having that idea that oh i want to i want only i want to be uh yeah even what mark was saying about um uh like i said language is very important they they use language to to try and uh, police behavior so they go oh we wanted you to have a safe space away from, safe from the white gays. First of all, there's no, there's no, I don't think any black person has ever felt unsafe in a theater. Uh, do you know what I mean? So what, what's, what safety are you trying to, <laughs> what safety are you trying to protect? And then they're like the white, the white gays. It's like, I don't know. It, it, there's specific language that are is we, used to, 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 that's to, line, to, to, that line feels to, crazy to me because there's white people in the cast. Yeah. Yeah. So but I just they, don't understand. Yeah, but the, just the funny thing, the, the funny role. thing is, and it's about white people. The funny thing is, the, the white people in the cast are also so left leaning, probably because in the entertainment industry, I've seen that. I've got friends that are actors. They be, they were a certain way, and then once they got into acting, so they almost got indoctrinated mm-hmm. to think a certain way because they it's like. Have you noticed you, you don't know any people that have right 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 leaning mm-hmm. ideologies in the entertainment industry? Because the ones that I do, they get they got they get. They get taken out. Mm. You have to think a certain way and be a certain way. So I'm sure even the white people that are in the place, like, yeah, it's great that there's the white, no white now. I love it. Because they're like, they might not care. They might not like it, but they're like, bro, I need to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, you know what, yeah. And even 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 going a little bit further, like, even um, even um, uh, Ramsey, like, I'm not trying to go at you, but like, you, you, were, you were like, oh, um, I don't, uh, this is not my, bat-. like, you, you kind of, bowed out entering the discussion and and I, I feel like a lot of people do that when it's like a discussion that and which is i understand that you, you want to be like um this is a black discussion so maybe you don't want to overstep the mark and say something but it's like 
I feel like a lot of people do that where they're like, oh, I'm, if, they, if there was a discussion about like India or something and I know something very um, astute about what's going on there, mm-hmm. I might just chime in and be like, oh yeah, this, that, and the other. So, and yeah. there'll be, uh, trust me, there'll be someone that'll be like, um, it's not your place to talk about this because you're not Indian. So just, um, yeah, yeah, so, but, so stand yeah. back and da, da, da. I'm yeah, like, yeah, but you can have an opinion. You mm-hmm. can have an opinion. You can have an opinion. You can have an opinion. You yeah, obviously but, don't step him up, but you can have an opinion. Do you know what I'm saying? 100%. Saying? But yeah, again, right. As much as your opinion may be valid in that space, people who are going through yeah. it and are native to that particular country may not want to hear your, your, your um, opinion. We can hear it another day. You know what I'm saying? But today, when it's just us talking about but, Congo, for example, I don't want to hear you people's yeah. um, nonsense opinion when you live in bloody, I don't Why? know, some other place. Why don't you want to hear their because, opinion? Because you don't care about Africa. Yeah, yeah you're, now you're uh, um, putting your views on them. You, how do you know that? 100%. That's exactly, that's exactly how do you know the point. That? That's exactly the point. You know that saying? is a very myopic way of viewing the world. Like, if, if you don't know what, that, you know, remember, do you, do you know, nah, 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 Iman, do you know, do you, do you know why you have sometimes a closed view of certain things? Because you only, you, you end up in the echo chamber with people that think the same way. You, do you know the amount of different podcasts and, 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 you know, we have this joke about me going at Esther, but I actually like her view because she has a completely different view to me. And the more I speak to her, the more I learn a specific way of thinking. And then at least I'm like, I've got lots of people that think like her in my life and I'm like, we've mm-hmm. had these discussions all the time. Yeah. So, which is good, but because a lot of people in the echo chambers, when they come across someone that views, op- that has opposing views to them, they, they just they just implode because they don't even know what to say because they, they're so used to just having everyone say the same thing as 100%. them and be in a bubble. 100%. So, so, so if you don't want to engage, if you don't want to oh, engage with people that, that, that yeah, don't have things to do, that's your problem. Black, Black Robert, you, you say you're that's me. Yeah, you're saying that. You're closed this conversation. You're proving your point. You're proving your point. You said you're closed, my name. You close your ears. Impossible. Black Robert, that's it. What did I just do? No, no, no. Because I'm saying the perspective of somebody in that room who says, you don't care about Africa. You don't. You know what I'm saying? And even though they may be wrong, they just want to have that space to say, listen, black people talk about black people's issues. You know what I'm saying? On a normal day, every other black person will have um, this um, problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so if, for example, again, using that same example, we're talking about Congo, why are you coming from yep. bloody um, Vietnam or wherever you're coming from to talk about Congo when I would prefer to hear from Congolese people? Yeah, you, no, you know I what I'm saying? That. But this... How the hell is that black, um, bloody close-minded? Okay, you cool. can have a valid point. You don't, you don't know you what can, they have to ask. Because because going going back to, the, to the subject, yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Do yeah, they yeah. promote this as a black knight, but anybody, anybody's welcome? Or okay. do they turn away other races on the door? This, this is what I'm not too sure about. I, I believe I did read somewhere saying that it's not like they're going to enforce it to get rid of people, so, sort of thing. But they are making it clear, we do want this to be a so, night for black people. But, but that's, a, that's, a, night, that's, a, that's, a, that's another problem that we do. That's another problem that we do. Do you know what we do? It's, we, we vocalize everything. Do you know, like, I remember in America, there's, there, was this, there was these two black women that were like really high flyers and they made lots of money and they started a venture capital uh, angel fund and yeah. they said they were only going to fund black businesses and they got in trouble because it's like anti some sort of discrimination I was like why to say it just do it <laughs> do you know what I mean we always vocalize when we're going to do positive discrimination for our own people but every other group does it but they just do it and they don't say it and it's not written anywhere do you yeah, know what I mean so they can't get done for it because <laughs> I've gone to events that there's, there's, there's only black people in there yeah and it wasn't promoted yeah. as a black only night. No white inside. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but sometimes if, if that event is 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 like, for example, remember this is the most Tommy um Tony no, um, nominated play of all time. So this is not yeah. something that is just for only black people know about. Just Everyone saying, knows yeah. about this. And so if I just want a particular man, no, <laughs> but they use that as a marketing tool. No, but what I'm trying to say is, it, perhaps. But if everyone knows about this potentially, and I want to have a night or two. For just black people, yeah. I have to say it. Is it? Is it? Who is the writer? Is it writer of black? Yeah, it has to be James O'Hara. So, so what, what you can do is that you can, what what you could have done yeah. is that you could have partnered with like um like a foundation or like a school or something and say exactly. hey discount for yeah something like that. So it's bait what we're doing, but you like we we're just too bait with our our movement. That's the problem. Like, no, honestly, no, no, honestly, no, no, honestly, no, honestly this is a marketing tool and it's working because here we are talking about it. Like he wanted. This is making people curious. I mean, big up Jin and Jis. They're going to go and see the play mm-hmm. on the blackout night, yeah, yeah. and she'll feed back to all of us. Thank you very much, babes. Well, I mean, I'll believe you when I because you meant to come here as well. So yeah. <laughs> oh, I would hold you to that. But you get me. I feel like he's using this as, as a form of publicity and marketing because again, like Black Rob yeah, is saying true. here, there's people who do things for their own community and they don't make a scene about it. They don't announce it. It's done. 
like Marcus is saying, he's been to events where it's just black people in there. And I'm sure white people have been to events where it's just white people in there. Like him making an announcement and making a whole thing about it is a form of marketing is so he can sell more tickets and stuff. Yes, it might be Tony awarded or whatever it is. But as we've learned, not all that like, this is gold. I think he just used yeah. it as a marketing tool and it's, it's worked in his favour. Yeah, I do think it's part of marketing. Losing their shit, yeah. shit over it. It's worked. But I also do think it's part ideology because if you, like I said, entertainment, you guys are, you guys probably rub shoulders with a lot of people in entertainment she a lot. Maybe, and they, especially like when it comes to actors and stuff, they, they're just, they're just mad, like super, super, especially the ones in Cali and all that stuff. They're super left-leaning and they have some weird views on sometimes that they, that spills into the, 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 um, the content that they create and also the way that they want to release the content. I'm, I'm, yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's the whole thing. All right, you know, before, before you go there, yeah, let, let's, let's, get, um, <clears throat> let's get back to the initial thing. Whether you feel like it's go necessary on. or not, is it racist? Is it racist to, yes. tell, to, what, to tell people that the, a certain group, race of people can't come to a certain night? Whatever the situation is that I read out there, <laughs> no, no, no. racist. You don't like the way I said it, but that's what it is, isn't it? That's why no, I just no, said I, you right? Remember, this is not my play. This is not my play. You remember? You remember? So I don't feel any type of way. At all. I'm just simply saying, is it racist? Is it racist? Um, the, the definition of racist, yes, it is. Okay, fine. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not beautiful. Yeah. All right. All right. And do you know what it is? Do you know it's it is as well, yeah? I, I, I take back yeah, what I said not, to Brent. Because I remember last time when we spoke about, like, um, uh, Maya Briggs things. I yeah. actually see it now. Iman, Iman has such blinkers when it comes to, like, black people. You can't be uh, pragmatic. <laughs> you know what? That might be the case. Because people don't care yeah. about black people or Africa. I do. Uh, you're, you're, doing your, you're doing yourself a disservice I'm when you not, can't you know. be logical thinkers when it's your own people. No, 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 no. The, the reality is, you ask <laughs> anyone that speaks to me, I am logical. I criticize black people like crazy. But amongst black people, and for the betterment of black people, I'll do anything yeah. that's necessary. That's the difference between yeah, me and yeah. many other people. That's why when it comes that's to true. debate, you can't. I'm Floyd. You know what I'm saying? I'm Floyd. Yeah, what? I'm Floyd. You're Floyd, what? That's right. Okay. Show the road. Now you got blinkers, mate. Floyd, no, Floyd, Floyd ain't got blind spots. You got right, blind cool. spots. All right, cool. <laughs> You're obviously just trying to draw me out, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, Impossible. Uh, all right, Thank cool. You. Right, right. Late for work. <laughs> No, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right, cool. So, so this is the thing that um, Gina just sent in. Mm. By inviting black audiences here, you were uninvited. On right Broadway, yeah. there were nights where tickets were only sold to people who identified as black. Are you going to do that in the West End? I'm so excited to. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things that we have to remember is that. Um, People have to be radically invited into a space to know that they belong there. And in most of our country, in most places in the West, uh, poor people and black people have been told that they do not belong inside of the theater. If the price of that is saying to people who are just because they're white, you can't come, you're not allowed in this space. Does that make you uncomfortable? Well, no one's saying, listen, uh, there are, there are a litany of places in our country, in all of our countries, that are generally um, inhabited by only white people. And no one uh, has questions about that. And no one is saying that by inviting black audiences here, you were uninvited. The idea of a blackout night is to say, this is a night that we are specifically inviting black people to fill up the space, to feel safe with a lot of other black people in a place where they often do not feel safe. Let's not act um, uh, as though we do not know that uh, culturally, black audiences and white audiences respond to things differently. No one is saying that by inviting black audiences here, you were uninvited. On Broadway. First of all, this makes a lot of sense now. I get it. He's American. He's American. The way they identify with race and blackness and be not being allowed in spaces, all that kind of stuff, is different over there than it is here. Because when I listen to the answer that he gave, he's, his answer is not relevant to theatre. It's relevant to black experience. And it's relevant to his black experience as an American, as an African-American. I get why he's brought it here. It's still, I don't agree with it. But I get why he's brought it here. I think it's the wrong crowd. He is probably seeing white people in the audience time and time and time again because yeah. they're normal um, theatre goers. Mm. Mm. And he wants to let the black people know, hey, you guys have come to theatre too. 
Mm. And he thinks the best way to do that is to say, A Black Knight. Black mm. <laughs> He said, I did this for y'all. You know what, yeah? I don't think there's nothing wrong with promoting Black Only Nights. If, the, if, if it is, like you're saying, to introduce yeah. a whole culture to a new space that they might not have be aware <clears> of <throat> or be welcome to. And I think like, that could be for that could be for any place. Like it doesn't have to be black plays. It could be yeah. white people. It could be any like any plays at all. That initiative, I can hear it. I can make sense for it. But I think why this one just feels different is because the premise of the play is interracial. So it feels it feels it feels different leading with this to me. You get me. But speak hearing him speak and understanding what he's what he's saying. And again, it's not white people ain't banned from the space, innit? You get me? It's just trying to promote it to black people to get them used to come to the fair and to let them know that, yeah, boom, this is something part that can of it. do. They're not banned from the space, but um, this particular message he believes is going to reach black people yeah. and get them to leave their houses to come to that much to play. Do you know what I think he's that? I feel like that's what he should have said. Because listen to the answer he gave about, you know, there's spaces of black people are like, you know, you're not allowed in here, you're not allowed here. And that is relevant. That is... That applies. But I think that with this situation, unfortunately, I think that what he really should have promoted was that black people aren't always in theatre because of something that we're used to in our community. Da, 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 da. And I'm doing this to to um let us know that we can also watch like we can also watch plays. We can also be in theatre. We can also do these things. Da, 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 da. I feel like that would have been great. Would have been even greater if it was all black cast. But because we're talking about interracial, I, like I get it. I feel like I feel like he not no no no. no I don't get what he's currently done. Mm. I would get it had he pushed that narrative mm. of this is here to try to encourage black people to more in the theatre, in the theatre space. Yeah, because that's not that's not a space we're typically in. Do they do, should do it for everything. Like I said, it could be, I don't care if it's Scrooge or Lion King. That yeah. initiative, I feel like that that, that initiative yeah. is cool. It's, it's not a bad thing. I just mm. don't think this is, I just think this vehicle, the vessel that they've used to, to promote it here mm. is confusing. I think it's a white gaze situation. I think I saying think that exactly is the, is the, the line, white gaze is what this doesn't. White gaze doesn't apply like apply here. Excuse me, I'm not an interracialist, but maybe you guys feel gazed on. But <laughs> I just don't think it applies in this situation. I, and I I think that as well. Actually, I think they should adopt that for every for plays in general. Have black nights because again, black people are not really white brothers told us they, they're mm. not really like we're not really we don't really watch plays or go to theatre. It's not really a thing that we your typical black person does, like, as they would cinema. I feel like he should have he should have done that. As soon as I heard the accent, I said, ah, I get it. I get mm. it. But good luck to him in his play. All right. Uh, do you guys want to even watch this scene that it's about slave play? Sorry, what? It's, it's about slave, slave play. It's called, it's called slave Sorry, play. Sorry, interracial... Um, yeah. So is it role play, slave play and role playing in bed? Yeah. It's, it's called, what it's about. We don't know none of that. It's called slave Dylan play. Dylan Jess is going to tell us about it. Yeah, but isn't like a synopsis um, of me, what the play is about? There has to be. The, show, the, show's been, the show's been running. There must be reviews. They must be able to there find out synopsis. what the show's yeah, about. Yeah, it should be. What is, we need to know what the play is about. Because if you've had me, me arguing ask, here... Let me ask Bart. ...about slavery, fornication... Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Emmanuel posed the question. It may not be um, the actual focus of this, like, hmm. topic. But um, I guess it would be good to focus on what's actually happening in the flipping play. It would be. Because if it's slave role play, <laughs> I'm against all forms of that. The I think slave... Do you guys, are you guys for or against slave role play? What the fuck is slave role yeah, play? Yeah, well in bed. <laughs> what the fuck? The, wh the white person's massa. What? And you play slave. What? No, no, like, that's not what that, that feet guy was out here doing. Not feet guy. Oh, <laughs> that... that... whoever it's called. They degrade you in whatever because they, they own you. They're a master. All right. nah, so I'm not a I'm not a role play man at the best of times. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the best of times. <laughs> <So. laughs> I can't pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Slave play is a groundbreaking play by Jeremy O. Harris that ex ex examines the lingering effects of slavery on contemporary Black Americans, particularly in the context of interracial relationships. It takes place at a plantation <laughs> where oh. three mixed race couples undergo anti-bellium sexual performance therapy, a controversial process meant to unlock their sexual power dynamics. The play explores themes of race and racism. The play um, unflinchingly dissects how the legacy of slavery 
and ongoing racism impacts personal experience for black individuals in America. Sexuality. Slave play uses sexuality and power as a lens to understand how race plays out in intimate relationships, blurring the lines between consent, desire, and historical power structures. Trauma. The characters uh, grapple with the lingering psychological trauma from generations of oppression and how it uh, seeps into their present day struggles and identity and self-awareness. The play forces characters and the audience to confront uncomfortable truths about themselves and their position within complex societal systems. The controversy, slave play has garnered uh, significant uh, attention and controversy due to graphic content. This play incorporates sexual explicit scenes and racially charged language that some viewers find disturbing or offensive. Uh, the subject matter, the play's uh, exploration of sensitive topics like race, trauma, and power dynamics makes many deeply uncomfortable. And or disengagement, the play intentionally blurs the lines between reality and performance, sometimes making the audience directly complicit in the action in uncomfortable ways. This sounds so intense. That sounds good, though. Interactive, right? It sounds like a decent, it sounds very intense. sounds like a decent um, play. You should have led with that. You know, it will get black people going. <laughs> but is sex. interracial dating different in America? Yeah, one hundred percent. Because they got like the at least they got like you know, four hundred years of history on their, on their shoulders. Um, like, do they mm. do black people feel different in the race? Because obviously, like I'm saying, the plantation. Like when you said that, and you said that, that just brought me back to like slavery, all that kind of stuff. Mm. But it's a, it is like a. It's a black experience, but it's an American experience. It's an American experience. experience. It's mm. different. You know what I'm trying to say? Black men dating white men and women in America it's would different. feel different to black men in England dating white women, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. It depends. depends what area you're in, though, I think. No, but I, I don't think it will ever be as intense as it is in America. I feel like in America, regardless of what state, it's, like, it's a thing because of how it is that like, they're racism. Like, here, we've got a lot of covert racism. People mm. think stuff. People don't necessarily say that out there. Out there, they're calling you a nigger lover. They're calling you like they're saying all sorts. I think it depends on the area. If you go to a place like I don't know, I mean, maybe Atlanta, they don't really care. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, or, or like LA or something. Yeah, it, okay, yeah, 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 that's I right. Think, and I guess it depends on yeah. the state. All the bloody NBA stars do it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's all in front like of you. Like you said it. They're, they're different when you're in position, yeah. like sportsmen and that, and people in position of power. They're they're, they're yeah, kind of jaded as well. The footballers but... over here do it and that as well. No, it's a very yeah. big thing. Just to say that they do it doesn't mean that they don't get criticised for it do. every single turn. They do. Yeah. They do. I mean, and that's why Dr. Uma is so popular. I criticise them. And they must feel different within themselves. Like, I've slept with bare white women. I never thought about slavery one time. Mm. Like, <laughs> didn't, like, didn't cross my mind. Mm. But it must be tougher for American. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. I'm from Trinidad, isn't it? I'm actually from the West Indies. So I couldn't do. I couldn't do what you did. What? Not think about you've slavery. You've done it several times. Why? <laughs> yes, I, I, I would. I would always think about slavery. Okay. Yeah, that's unusual though. Remember, but that's, I, well, that's the kind of guy you don't sleep with. This is the guy that have sex with you as if demons are chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> 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 some people this, again this is, this is not me giving real this is not from experience anything but some men yeah they take out the aggression of the day out on the poor person and they're sleeping with so I imagine in some interracial situations if it is someone that does think about slavery and thinks about and currently feels oppressed mm. I imagine they would take it out on that poor <laughs> <laughs> that poor white girl who just wanted to get some now she's puni she's now she's been punished for the sins of her ancestors it's crazy punish her yeah. with a good time <laughs> that's what you think <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh yeah, he should have left with that I mean it sounds like it should be it could be interesting mm -hmm. mm. might be what am I going to take it out there because he said he said something about money in there he mm. said he said something I think he said something about money. So it would be interesting to see, to know how much it is, if it's affordable or whatever it is. But I, I think that sometimes when people want to use black and use this, but I think if you want to use a buzzword, you got to make sure it ties in together, man. Otherwise, I, I hear that. It's just a you, word. I hear that. But I, I guess uh, for me, the whole thing is he's being accused of being racist. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And this is a racist act. That's more no, so, not, you know what I'm saying? It, it's less so about if it's necessary. It's more so if... 
is, is the accusations, are the accusations correct? Is this racist? You know mm. what I'm saying? I don't think it's, I don't think it's a racist thing. Again, racism, what racism really is, it's uh, a whole Jay, what do you mean? Do you mean this week? Thing. What? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> does he mean this week? What are you talking about? Jay asked, he said, I wonder if Mars ever been of a black woman. <laughs> so this week? <laughs> That's what I'm asking him. Do you mean this week, Gilly? Random. Hmm. So dumb. But, um, <laughs> yeah, man. She is a woman. Is it? Yes. It I thought is. it was a brother. It is not. What's the name? Okay, it just says Jay. Jay's a... With a flower. Oh. If it was a flower, man, isn't it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the cheapest tickets are uh, twenty pound. Well, it range from yeah, twenty pounds. Yeah, but those ones where to... you're sitting in the cloakroom, right? Yeah, it's in range, the shadow of the cast. It ranges right, from twenty to one. You know? <laughs> I mean, if they come on the show, <laughs> you'll see tickets. We can go there. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, he, 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 if you're gonna do black things, you should be good on pl- black publications. Out here going to argue with a white woman on LBC. Be fucking for real. <laughs> Sorry, but I, I hope it goes well, man. Um, yeah, man. Do you know just let us know. But if it's gonna be graphic as well, every white really is all over the place. Let us know if you see any nudity as well. I like a detailed review, actually. So wait a minute, because obviously this it's... could be white black women as well, isn't it? No, no, no. Be like, no, they can't do a white. He he could not do a white men only on black women. No, be both. If it's like in my head, I just think it was black men and white women. <clears throat> you know what? No, though, if both. it goes, back to, the, if it goes well. back to the plantation mm. and the master's the man, and there probably it might be a white man in there. Mm. I think I think we the one hundred percent will be a white man up in there, and yeah. I think there'll be a white woman as well. Mm. Because if it's three couples, three interracial couples, you can mix them up. Yeah, the, the master's wife used to steal away and look yeah. to go to the the shed. It's a very problematic subject area, though. For for what he's exploring, it's a bit. It's a bit. It will be interesting to watch it because the plantation situation. When it's the women sleeping with the men. It's like sexual harassment. It, not it's like, it is sexual harassment because these men, the the white women were in a position of power. So it's the rape. black men could, it is, exactly. Mm-hmm. And it was the same way, the other way around. So I want to know what made him go with that verse. And when she got caught, then she would scream that he tried to rape exactly. her. Exactly, and then, and then they would get died. killed. Yeah. It's a very, I don't know why he's gone with that verse. But it's the, still it was the best-selling theatre production. Manuel? Say again? It's the best performing theatre production. Enoch said it's white men and black women. Oh. What, all the couples? Enoch, you know a lot about it. You've seen it in America or something? He's yeah, saying just Google reviews, it. Just reviews, okay, cool. He said just Google it, you'll see. Yeah, but yeah. What, are all it's the couples? Make, it makes sense, though. All the you couples said can't be. He said it's not like 12 years of sure, sure I'll be honest not. with you, yeah. Surely not. I'm trying to see that. All the couples can't be white men and black women, surely. No, surely not, man. Enoch did his research, apparently, might be. He said it's like 12 years of slave. I never watched that either. Oh, yeah, uh, I've seen that. Probably best selling though because things that like that um, white guilt is a is a form is a way of making money. You play on white guilt, you can make some money. It's, it's not the best selling. It's the the most Tony nominated play of all time. How is many Tonys did it win? How many? How many is it nominated? Won? No, how many is it won? I don't care about nominations. <laughs> the guy that how played many John nom- Snow is How many Tonys did it win? Oh no, <laughs> you played John Snow. Is he cute? Oh yeah, he's in it. He's in it. Hold on, sir. Let me let me show you. Let's find out. The guy who didn't become king, man. At the end, sorry, spoiler and all that. The middle guy? Yeah. Okay. Was that? Yeah. Esther? Was that? I only see black. You guys have too many jokes oh, about me. Like, you're ruining my brand. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. All right. I guess we can wrap it up there, man. Yeah. Not the best, everybody. Mm-hmm. Let's get into our next headlines, please. Okay. All right, people. So, our next headline. Just loading up. Bit of a delay in that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, people are questioning you now, all sorts in the chat now, right? What about his sleeping ah. thingy? About my sleeping habits. Yeah. Why? They what did she say? I don't know. They think I don't like black women or something. Anyone, any black women I want to see whether he likes black women, come through me. I'm 100, 100 pounds admin fee. Actually, that's no, let, 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 let him fight his that's own pimping. battles to get me. Who, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't got no battles to fight. Yeah, you know that man does not care. I don't care what people think. The, the, the black girl that I'm chopping, they, they, 
They know what they know. It. So <laughs> that matters. <laughs> That's whatever people think of me, none of my business. And I like women first and foremost. I'm not obviously when you say things like how you say, and I get it because everybody's got their preference here, yeah. but I honestly don't understand if that makes sense. Cause mm. I like women. You get me? Okay, yeah. See, I like black men. Yeah, see, and mm. this one's I say, I like yeah. women. There's not a I wouldn't when I I wouldn't say, Oh, I couldn't date someone from this country or from mm. this place or from this step. I don't understand. Just try it. Sexy, see, sexy if to it me. Is that you, you'll be fine. What if I do it? Try and see it. Say what? I'll just say it. I just like black women. Go on. But I'll be lying. I said I can't even. I just like black women. Is this all right? Let's see how powerful that was. You're ridiculous. I like variation, you know, flavors you and can like, get different like variations of black women. United Nations. Yeah, I do. Life. This is what I'm trying. To, I want all. Why am I taking away from? I, don't, I want all. I've, I have all variations <laughs> of black women. You know what? Women. You are why glutton is a sin. Yeah. You want it all. Yeah. <laughs> all. Greed. Greed, gluttonous is my favorite <laughs> sin. I, have, I want black women sin. in all shades, shapes, and sizes. I also want white gal, Indian gal, Asian gal, Middle Eastern gal. Gal alone is what we are dealing with. All mm. type of gal is what I'm looking. I'm sorry, it doesn't diminish my love for any type of woman over. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? I don't... Doesn't it? Doesn't Ooh, it though? That's true. Who's your favorite? Doesn't it though? What do you think you might know? We're here now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, but the way I see it is, for every plate of fish and chips I eat, mm. it's a plate of pound of yam I can't eat. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So if I prefer that, it's a loss if I get that. Also, but if you eat the fish and chips and you know how much you love the pound of yam, when you fall black to it, it's, it's delectable, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? You hear that? He said when you fall black to it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> There's your answer, people. You get me? That's not the answer. You said because you're, you're going to say when you fall white to it. You said when you fall black to it. Life's about experiencing things, man. I know you don't care. Brent, what's your question? I'm surprised, is, I'm surprised would, you don't like Indian things, you know? I don't know Ooh. what you're talking about. I if no I ever saw about. that, if my I ever saw that, Indian, yeah, I'll be honest with you. My first girlfriend was Indian. The Trini, the Tequili things what? and the Trini things are, are loud. <laughs> you know Dougla? Yeah, they're Leng. I'm surprised you, that, don't, you she, don't dabble. She's half black. Yeah, but it's the said thing, man. No, it's not the same thing. Yeah, but they look like... You know what I'm saying? No, they don't look the same. Half, but you know what I'm talking about anyway. The I know what you're talking about, and it's incorrect. Okay, sorry. I'm screaming. Okay, Christy upset. said you can't be saved, unfortunately. She didn't, she didn't. Who can't be saved? You. Who, me? Christy. Whatever, man. My black queens are <laughs> rubbing cocoa butter in my head. Don't mind your business, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> mind your business. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Did you just tell her to put cocoa butter in the head? Uh huh. I thought I heard cocoa butter. You did. You did. You did. And when, I heard hair. Not in that. I said, when my black queens are rubbing cocoa butter on my head, mind your ah, business. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me something. Tell me something. If you were to ever get married, I know you said that you don't believe in my, and that bollocks, right? Mm. But let's just say you get to 50 and you're a bit senile and you b b believe in companionship and you want companionship and whatnot. Mm. Would you ever marry a white woman? Mm -mm. Why? Because... It's but probably it's probably better to be like equally yoked. You know, like culturally, when you if you date out of your culture and you meet different people, you can actually see the differences between people in it, so, and and you know what's for you, and it does feel better when you're with okay. your own. So when you said that you like gal, you just mm. like having sex with gal. You yeah. wouldn't date a white girl. I've dated a white girl before. Would you date her now that you are awake? No. <laughs> Why not? Because the equally yoke thing. Yeah, because obviously if you just got a preference in it, you just go to, it would just be better. With everything that's going on in the world, it's probably just better to just go so home. So you really care about what the world's saying in relation to your relationship? No, no, no. It's not what they're saying. I'm just saying with everything, it's like, it's like what you're saying, but everything that's going on in the world, just having conversations, your culture, like being, just being from the same place, knowing different things, knowing about music, knowing, like what you were saying, if you're sitting down watching a slave movie or something about George Floyd, you don't need to explain or... So essentially for you, everything's sex is just, just sex. Yeah, sex is just sex. Uh, fair yeah. enough. That's, that's, I now understand. It's just sex. You just wouldn't take them seriously. Sex is Don't sex. Don't do it. Sex, sex is sex for me. Fair enough. How do you right. get here anyway? Headlines. You chose to, to go here. All right. Yeah, so. We <laughs> 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 <You> did that. <laughs> this next headline is about um, Red Bull's Christian Horner. So apparently, um, Christian Horner. I thought you wanted to say owner, and your Yoruba jumped out. I said, nah, no, no, Horner. <laughs> <laughs> well, his Formula One future is back in the spotlight after WhatsApp messages appeared 
um, apparent to be sent by him have been leaked. So on Wednesday, he was cleared of, um, to continue as Red Bull team principal following an internal probe by the F1 team's parent company, Red Bull GmbH. Um, but just 24 hours later, hundreds of messages and a number of images, apparently between Horner and the complainant, were sent from an anonymous email account to members of the Formula One paddock. Um, recipients include F FIA President Mohammed Ben Suleiman, F F1 CEO Stefano Domenicali, and the Grid's nine other team principals, as well as the media on the eve of this. They really want to get this guy out of here. On the, on the eve of this weekend's season opening um, Bahrain, Grand Prix. It's unclear at this stage whether the alleged exchanges, which have been sent by the um, PA news agency, formed part of the investigation, of which Horner was cleared of inappropriate behaviour towards a female colleague, or whether it's um, new evidence. Horner is 50, has always denied the claims. Media outlet are trying to confirm if the exchanges are genuine. The Red Bull boss said in a statement on Thursday night after alleged texts were leaked, I will not comment on anonymous speculation, but to reiterate, I have always denied the allegations. Next headline, and the UK's asylum backlog is failing, uh, pardon me, it's falling, um, new figures show, driven by an increase in decisions being made. The number of approvals and refusal, refusals rose significantly last year, according to the latest Home Office data. Figures show that the Home Office made 74,172 initial decisions on asylum applications during 2023, nearly four times the number made in 2022. The Home Office hailed the progress made, but Labour criticised the continued cost of hotel accommodation. The figures show 45,768 asylum seekers were in hotel accommodation at the end of 2023. Little changed on the year before. Two thirds of the asylum decisions were positive, a slightly lower rate than, the, than in the previous two years, but the total number of people granted humanitarian protection hit a new record. And our last headline, trigger warning on this one, guys. And um, a violent transgender prisoner whose transfer to a woman's jail was blocked has died in custody. Tiffany Scott, he was previously known as a man called Andrew Burns, died in HMP Grampian on Thursday. 32-year-old was serving an indefinite sentence under order for lifelong restriction. Scott was handed the sentence in 2013 after admitting stalking a 13-year-old girl by sending letters while serving a prison sentence. Um, a Scottish Prison Service spokesperson said that Tiffany Scott, 32, of HMP Grampian has died on 29th of February 2024 with each death in custody. Police Scotland are advised and the matter reported to the... Uh, anyway, the fatal, fatal accident inquiries are held in due course. Scott, then known as Burns, was convicted of attacking a nurse in Cheshire in 2010. In 2017, Falkirk Sheriff Court was locked down amid, safely, amid safety that fears... Um, amid safety fears, pardon me, as Scott was sentenced over a series of violent incidents in Glenokill Prison in Clackmanshire. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the headlines, guys. Time to pay the bills. Thank you. Let's get into some word on the road. Um, Kanye is back at it. Do you know what? All the stuff that's been going on about Diddy and... Oh, I forgot to add um, Meek in there and academics. They're still going back. Actually, no. This people are still going back and forth. And in all the tweets that Meek is doing, he never wants to deny allegations. But anyway. What was I saying? Yeah, but all the stuff, all the darkness, all the, all the crazy things that's been coming out. I don't think, I think Kanye gets a bad rep. Excuse me? <laughs> I do. No, no, no. I don't think we should be calling... I mean, I've been saying that calling him crazy is a bit wild. I've been saying that from day, to be fair. I've been consistent with that. But I think the man has seen things. Mm. And uh, No, mm -mm, I don't want your co-sign. <laughs> not in the way E-Man did not know what had been seen or anything like that. No information. I was like, oh, I'll just wait for him to land. This is not a wait for him to land thing. This is just, I think that he is very frustrated in the system that he's in. And he's consistent in lashing out. What were you going to say, Brent? Because I know there's something in your... I have no sympathy or empathy for Kanye West. He has chosen the bed in which it is that he is now complaining yeah. about. So, I you. no. I, I don't... I, don't, I yeah. can't forget all the things that he has done. Oh, I don't forget everything that he's done. Because I also believe that the only reason why Kanye speaks about the injustice that he speaks about is because he's now at... He's now the one suffering injustices. When he wasn't suffering them, these things have always existed. But when he wasn't suffering them... When he was benefiting from the system, he was very calm and quiet. But when he started getting got by the system, that's when he started opening his mouth. 
So I'm just saying, I think the man says truths. I'm not saying that, you know, people need to forget or necessarily rally behind him. God, I still, he still feels insincere. Insinc- yeah, that's the word. Yeah, insincere. Insinc- and he's, yeah. he's still protecting his, his best yeah. interests. He was yeah. given an opportunity to talk about the Israel and Palestine conflict just the other day, mm-hmm. and he didn't take it. Yeah. You understand? Know so he's need. like, no, no, I'm not doing that again because mm. I want to protect whatever I'm looking to build right now. You understand? Know so yep. And know. that's the thing. I feel like if he's if everything that he's lost is restored to him, he'll be mute again. So yeah, he's a, I mean he's he's a phony. But anyways, in his phony behavior, he is now he well, he, I mean he has been doing it for a while. Basically, publicly now saying telling Kim to take the kids out of the fake school. That's what he calls it. He says he's saying well, he's demanding that she takes the kids out of their fake school. And I just think that things like this, unfortunately, he he hasn't got um he doesn't read the room very well very well. Because if he knows what people think about him and whatnot, I don't know why you think doing things that look like public breakdowns is going to ever going to help your situation. All he's doing, yeah. Obviously, she's someone who wants her children to be in like the father to be in the kids' life and whatnot. But had she been a wicked woman, all these things that he's been doing. He, she, he could, really, she could, sorry, she could really just take this to court, and that'll be that. And he won't see the kids until they're eighteen, and they're grown enough to decide that they want to see him. So all the things that he keeps doing, I don't understand how he's not understanding that it's not helping your case. But anyway, he's talking about she needs to take the kids out of the fake school and blah 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 blah, and whatever else. It says basically what he posted was, Kim, take my kids out of Sierra Canyon now. It's a fake school for celebrities that are used by the system. And when you do stuff like that as well, because she's spoken about having to like up the security levels of the kids and whatever, because he's the one who put the kids' school out there. Why would you do that? Everyone knows you don't tell people where your, your kids go. When you start doing the first day of your kids' nursery and primary and year seven, all that kind of stuff, people always say, take out the school, what's it called? The logo and the uniform and stuff like that, because crazy people exist, especially with celebrity kids. They're crazy people that go and stalk the parents, sorry, stalk the kids trying to get access to the parents. So he's out here telling anyone where his kids go to school. Um, and then it's, yeah, he said, at this point, everybody knows what the system is code word for. I was removed from my dad by the system and the system removed me from my children. This is another thing on the topic of interracial dating. These are the, kind of the problems that you will have when you see a system and your partner doesn't. And your dad that was in a in an all black relationship took you out of the system because they were equally yoked in seeing what the system was. But when you're with somebody who's not black and doesn't face and um, doesn't face your problems, they don't know what system you're talking about. They think you're, for lack of a better word, crazy. So anyway, that's what's happening. And um, Kim's reps did respond, or a source close to Kim, and they're basically just saying that. Yeah, shut up. Quite long story short. Um, Haley Bieber. This is the thing. Sometimes when you tell your parents too much stuff, I'm not really for telling your parents too much stuff because. I mean, to be fair, with people, and anyway, let me never go into that, that rabbit hole. But basically, Hayley Bieber's dad has let the world know that Hayley Bieber and Justin Bieber are going through something. No one asked him to do all of that. So um, Stephen Baldwin, who is um, the actor, he basically posted something. <laughs> what was it? He posted something. I think it was like just, um, it, it was like a picture, a video of Justin Bieber and Hayley or whatever. And then Stephen then reposted Haley's dad's post in the video. And he said, Christians, please, when you think of Justin and Haley, take a moment to offer a little prayer for them to have wisdom, protection, and to draw close to the Lord. Then uh, Haley Bieber's dad said, I seldom like to post about certain folks in the limelight because of the negative um, comments we get. Eileen and Haley's mum pray often together for Justin and Haley. His name is Haley, yeah. And our children as well. There are special challenges that folks in high visibility positions face. And also the enemy doesn't want them to draw closer to Jesus. So often, regardless of the material things or the accolades, they often face spiritual warfare that in, that intense and seeks, intends, I think he meant, that intends and seeks to shipwreck their faith, marriage and life in general. So thank you. Yeah, man, don't use me for your sermon. Don't use my marital problems to push your sermon in your, in your <laughs> pastor suit. Don't do not do that. So anyways, cut long so short, Haley's upset with her dad for putting her business out there, rightfully, as she should be. I don't know why why you would think to do that. Now you're calling on the fans that have caused, because they've caused her a lot of distress anyway. Some obviously, the crazy, the weird fans. Because um, obviously he used to date Selena Gomez, and then when he got married to Haley, 
it was a whole thing. And then they would always, it was just a whole stupidness. But anyway, she's upset with her dad. And personally, I get why. And what was it about? Oh yeah, Cat Williams. So Cat Williams is on Joe Rogan's podcast. I haven't watched it yet. I will be doing that today. However, I did see a clip circling around about you people, you naysayers that thought the man did not read 3,000 books. Well, he broke it down. How he read 3,000 books. And he said, as a kid, he was not allowed. That he basically, he didn't go to, might have been a Jehovah's Witness or something. But basically, he, he didn't go to birthday parties, didn't celebrate Christmas, didn't celebrate Jesus anything, didn't celebrate Halloween, didn't celebrate any little holidays there are throughout the year. He didn't celebrate any of that. He wasn't allowed, essentially. And he's from entertainment. He didn't really watch shows and all that kind of stuff either. His from when Samen was reading. This is what he was allowed to do. So he had eight hours a day to read. And he said that he would, he could read 200, 300 pages in an hour or so. So he was reading about eight books a day on average. He said he, the library, the max they let you check out is 20 books. So he would go to the library on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Joe Rogan's like, oh, so you're reading 60 books a week. He was like minimum, minimum. Because he said also, these are the books I'm counting, but he was like, outside of that, I'm also reading like Christian books and mm. religious books and whatnot. So minimum, minimum that he's checking up on the library is 60 books a week. And that's what he's reading. That's what he's dealing with. So all you naysayers, he's letting you know that, listen, I didn't have the kind of life you're here. You're, y'all ain't like me. I think it was either he was five or he was 10 when he clocked that the moon was hollow. What's in hollow? Like Obviously, you haven't watched the entire thing, and you probably don't know this particular th- um, conspiracy theory, right? Yeah. Uh, apparently, the moon wasn't always there. It was where placed was it? there. By huh? who? Where was the moon? It wasn't there. You put it where in America. What? You put it in America. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Aliens. So, so wait. Ah. So it never existed until the aliens put it there. Yes. And. It- he, and he, he found also, out he also when said he was when fired. he was an adult, that's when it is the whole, um, you know, when they set a missile there and it hit it and it, you heard it reverberating for hours. Boom. So he's hearing the reverberation. No, no, this is documented. It's not a. No, no, I'm saying, but he was hearing the reverberation, the, rever- the reverberations. No, no. No, he wasn't. He just read oh. about The it. funny part of it was oh. that he said he knew from either five or ten, I can't remember which mm. one it was, that he knew. That the moon yeah. was placed there. I don't think it's due to reading and this, that, and the next. And what yeah. Now. Okay. He went everywhere. The stuff, mm-hmm. type of stuff that we cook up in his, this room. I don't know if he's found himself. The type of stuff we cook up in this room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys are in for a treat. Is it? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm obviously, I, like I told you guys, he also said that trigger warning, um, that transgenderism is from Baphomet. Baphomet is... Um, a male and female demon. As in, in one? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. the demon is transgender? It's yeah. Dual sex. It's the first transgender. Officially. It's a demon, isn't it? So they existed that's, before. That's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, okay, yeah. so he's saying, oh, they, okay, they just went forth and multiplied in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There were times when it is, he was even telling Joe that he's going into conspiracy theory. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's like you guys have been bathing in it for the entire time. <laughs> but um, yeah, he, he mentioned Anunnaki. Uh, he mentioned about the Egyptians, uh, how the pyramid was built. He believes that it was built by um, the Anunnaki. Mm-hmm. He mentioned, ooh, um, why, why do some people find it hard or some Christians find it hard to basically believe in aliens when... In the Bible, you talk about um, God having uh, the war with angels and then, you know, kick them out of heaven. Mm. Duh. So his theory is that the aliens and the angels, there are some um, connections We're there. Muck. Again, you've heard it from me first. You say you heard it here you first. It and I didn't have to basically go and hear it from anywhere. Just that I just reverse engineered my thinking. All right, thinking. trendsetter. Not your bad self. I wasn't reading books. <laughs> was you were reading eight books a day. <laughs> well, you know. Mm-hmm. But he did say that it wasn't novels and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nonfiction and whatnot. But, and it was, you know, that, I'm not sure if it is. I'm from West Indian family, right? So a lot of West Indian family, families have the whole encyclopedia of um, all these random facts about different countries and and, and fields of interest in this annex mm. and still upstairs to be honest and it's like bare books and he said he was also reading those 
So he counts those within his. Yeah, yeah. But I read those then. Yeah, yeah. I read thousands of them. But he goes. <laughs> Be real with me. I had the encyclopedia joints. Mm. I've read thousands of them. Bible stories. Yeah, I was reading. From, there was Ark and all that. From young. Mm. I was reading from. About four. Shut mm. up. Sorry. Mm. What? Mm. I thought you were going to say something ridiculous. I thought you were going to say you shut out the room you started reading. I was expecting to say something like that. No, of course. So the shop was reading. loaded. That's what I mean. So what age was you reading from? Oh, I'm an intelligent kid. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but been doing this. He also suggests that hell might be black holes. Mm. So we just fall through it. Mm, fall through it as in it, it has no sense of time um, and it's just void emptiness so I'm not thinking it's a falling but oh but we're just chilling there maybe yeah I don't yeah. get black hole it's because I guess the concept of a black hole you don't know much about it anyway no not yeah, at all yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, that's interesting I'm gonna have to make notes when I just watch this all, there's a lot and that's the First time I've ever seen Joe Rogan so skittish, so scared to even like push and stuff. Oh, I love that. Big old cat like, then. Cat was really having so. him. I think he was I think he really I think he really connected with Cat. Joe I didn't say he didn't. No, but I'm saying I didn't do you say like he did he didn't seem tentative because that weed high conversation, Joe loves that. Cat and he was just lapping it up. Cat because I don't know if he knew Cat was gonna just go off like that and have all this rhetoric and information. Like, if, I think he was really, really intrigued and he was just letting him cook, if that makes sense. I don't... Yeah. What do you think I just said? You said he was a bit... You said that's the first time you've seen him... Um, like, what's the word you use? Skitterish or something? Skitterish, yeah. He said he was like, not giving no pushback or nothing like that. And that's yeah, what you're saying, right? Yeah, he really reversed the cut. Like, really reverse him. Yeah, but I don't think he knew that. that. He didn't know what. That he revered him like that. I think it was all happening. He was watching it unfold in real time. He was watching this man talk and he was just like... Yeah, but this this is this is true. I mean, you're saying that he was moving as though it's the first time he's seen God. <laughs> you said that he's finding out in real time. Yes, it looked like he was finding out in real time. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but there was a lot of reverence shown. Mm. And where, where I guess Joe sometimes might think that he... For example, Kat told him about Emerald Tablets mm. and Joe had never heard about that before, which is crazy to me in my head. Mm. Um, and Emerald Tablets, like I told you before, uh, apparently it was like written by Thoth, uh, an Egyptian god, um, which he believes built the pyramids and whatnot. And apparently the... Bible draws from a lot of the Emerald Tablets. Do you believe him? Now, this is a theory, isn't it? And uh, the fact is that nobody's, nobody has the Emerald Tablets. So the translation of the Emerald Tablets was from some, some guy in, I want to say, either 1962 or something like that. And, um, and apparently he never went to Egypt. It was fact-checked that he never went to Egypt. He never went to the pyramids to find this particular tablet to then translate it and lose it. Do you understand? So there's a lot of um, um, misinformation around that particular thing. But I, I do believe that there were Egyptian gods because it said in the Bible that they had false gods that they were worshipping. So mm -hmm. 100%. And you see all of the paintings and whatnot and... Uh, inscriptions of the hieroglyphs and whatnot in the flipping places that they find. So I believe that all of them things are real. The Anunnaki, all of that crap is real. I already told you about my theory of how the Anunnaki and who the Anunnaki is anyway. So right. it's, it's it's a good listen because he didn't say anything that he said on um, Skippy's thing. Shannon's Skippy? thing. Shannon's thing. What did you call him Skippy? Skippy. I see him and I see Skip. Ah. Uh, but Shannon. Shannon Sharp. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's completely different content. The type of content I like. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a weed conversation. Mm, yeah. Mm. Three hours though, please. Listen to it on 2X. No, 
I don't have protein pieces in 2 x If they got three hours to spare, they got three hours to spare. I've got 1.5, so I will listen mm. on 2X. Because my, you ru- I was telling Brent uh, basically in the show before we started recording that he's ruined me. Can't listen to anything normally anymore. And You're, welcome. <laughs> You're, You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, 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 I'm 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 I hope it doesn't spill into real life, though. It won't spill into real life. You don't know that. Well, what if it's you going to affect to your life in a positive way because you're going to reclaim time that you never thought that you had to spend. No, I mean when I'm communicating with people and I'm looking at them like, get to the point. Because already, anyway, because <sighs> I speak fast, I can't... People that speak slow do my nuts in. I know I ain't got no nuts, but if I had them, they'd be in. Get to my nerves. People that speak slow get on my nerves. Because what are we doing here? And I'm already like that. Default setting. So now I'm listening to everything two, at 2 or 1.75 or 1.5 or whatnot. What if in real life and people are now trying to connect with me? Can we just get to the point? Are you depressed or not? I mean, that's not very good. We'll find out. Have you ever done an ADHD test? No, I haven't. Mm, I think you should. Why? Just because. <laughs> you ain't there. You can't tell me just because. Just because what? Because I have no patience. It's lack of patience. No, but not, not just the lack of patience, but you, like your body reacts to the fact that it is a, like this slowness is just... Edging into you. <laughs> I guess my nerves. Precisely. Especially if we are driving. I want to I wanna use my car to move them out of the road. But that's the thing though. If I find I've got... Say I do have ADHD, I don't. Let's say I did. It would change nothing because people will still piss me off for being slow. Yeah, but there will be... Yeah, fair enough. Hmm. I don't need the closure. Closure is a scam. I keep telling y'all. Is it? Closure is a scam. The relationship closure people seek is such a scam. Serious. Yeah. You have a ring in your nose. I do have a ring in my nose. Just seen it. Yeah. You didn't have that last time. No, I did not. I just did that yesterday. Okay. I As didn't have you a... To... No, no, no. I've always had, a... I've always had ah, it. No, yeah. But I wear a ring. No, not a ring. A uh, stud. But I didn't wear any yesterday at all. So yesterday my face was bare face. And I thought I'm going to go for a ring this time. So I've got a ring in there. Cool. Ring in my mouth, ring in my nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah, yeah. But you never take those out. No, no, no. I can't. I feel like it will close up. But mine's lasted longer than everyone else's though. Because typically, it's, it's a person that isn't meant to last that long because it's very thin. I think something mm. just falls out. Okay. It doesn't hurt anything. But mine, I've had it since 2016. Wow. Staple. Um, okay. And then lastly, um, so Oprah has been part of the Weight Watchers board all these years, right? Stuff like that. Anyway, I think it's a scam, stuff like that, respectfully. I feel like... There's a whole marketing thing of trying to make people lose weight and just taking their money and blah blah. And that doesn't have to be as complicated as that. But anyways, she's part. Of, she's been part of the Weight Watchers board for years since 2015, I believe. Yeah, 2015. However, she's leaving. Why is she leaving? Because she's currently losing weight using a drug. So, if Jet. someone on the board is not weight watching and got y'all on subscriptions, <laughs> and Okay, y'all might want to, I don't know. I don't even know who's part of Weight Watchers at this point anyway, but they must be doing something. But yeah, so she basically re- revealed in December that she's been, she decided to take a weight loss medication. She didn't say which one, but obviously Zempic is a craze right now. Honestly, you all need to behave as well with that because people that actually have diabetes and actually need the medication, apparently in some places there's a shortage. I think it was South Africa or something like that. It's a whole shortage of the actual medication for people that have an illness that requires medication because some of y'all oh, yeah, want to lose yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad. I don't know, man. But anyway, they will say I'm privileged because... The diabetes medicine, right? Yeah. So apparently there was only there's only a certain amount of stock that was provided. Um, and then because people were using to lose weight, the little stock that they had anyway now was not really available for people that actually have diabetes and stuff. So it's a whole thing. But yeah. Anyway, she said this. She said basically she's taking a weight loss medication. She's taking weight loss medication after coming to the realization that weight management does not hinge solely on a person's self control, and that is true. She says the fact that there's a medically approved prescription for managing weight and staying healthier in my lifetime feels like relief, like redemption, like a gift, and not something to hide behind and once again be ridiculed for. Funny she says that because she didn't say the name of the drug and put other people on. But then she's Oprah, isn't it? So it might sell out in a crazy way she does. Um, yeah, so basically she will not engage. So move forward with the coming off the board of weight loss, of Weight Watchers, sorry. She will not engage in any other weight loss or weight management business program. So any weight or weight loss management business 
program, products, or services. Um, but I think she's going to be a consultant on there. But there's that. Um, but apparently, the sh- what's it called? The shares fell by 20% after she exited on Friday. But that's awkward. Bound to happen. Um, but yeah, man, that's what's happening on Open Street. Obviously, her friend Tyler Perry is getting cooked. Did you watch that film, Ben? Makeup, Mel- Melicup, whatever it's called with Kelly Rowland? Nailed it. Thank you. Did you watch it? No. Yeah. No, Mia Culpa? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Maybe no. that's it. With, with, um, Kelly Rowland? Mm. Yeah, no, I haven't watched no. it. I heard a lot of bad reviews, though. I have, but then I was speaking to Sarah and she was, Sarah Belly, and she was like, it's not, like, people, sometimes people do too much. Is she Canadian? Was I going to do anything? I'll get onto it. So is she? Yes, she is. She's, no, she lives in Canada. She's not Canadian. She's, she lives there. You know something we don't? So it's just, you're right? I wasn't laughing at you, so sorry. Um, so I'm not sure how much of Tyler Perry's stuff she's actually watched. Oh, yeah. And I think most of the criticism was coming from that particular lens. Oh, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't watch Tyler Perry stuff. The last thing I think I would listen to whatever Cerevelli says, to be honest. Yeah, but I haven't. To be fair, though, remember again how we message. But that's why I like what I get me. It's easy I haven't for me finished to yet. listen to things from pretty faces. It is, mm. but I don't listen. I don't operate that way. So you. Where is it? Where you on me for? No, I'm, I'm talking to Esther. If it is that you want to join it, you can't. If it is you don't, then I don't know what you're talking I'm about. Not bothering you. Tell me what you're talking about. My friend, we're just talking. Don't worry. Go What's going on, Esther? What's he doing? Being Brent. Um. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I, I, I'm not gonna watch it. I can't bother it. I, I just think I'm gonna list of things I'm gonna watch. I'd, I just so I don't really. I have. I stopped watching Tyler Perry stuff after Medea stopped. Cause I like Medea. I like the Medea stuff. Medea is funny to me. So I like Medea. When he tries to get all serious and stuff, I just know. I love Shonda Rhimes. I'm looking right, but it's always some kind of. Something man, always a black man going through some shit, I and I get, just can't anymore. I gotta get you some merchandise. I'm above it. <laughs> I'm above it though. <laughs> I'm above it though. This week he's saying I'm above it. Cause okay. I'm not friend. I okay. don't. I don't. I don't. I was gonna see my therapist about that. Like, girl, what's really happening? <laughs> Cause I don't. Mm. Literally don't care. His style is really nice, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I know that really came from your heart. Because I'm, I'm watching you. Because you're watching me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, her friend is getting cooked anyway. So good day, bro. Like your hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> you noticed Ramsey's beard there. Did you notice how my hair was on? Yeah, yesterday it went on. Okay. I, I thought you just clocked. <laughs> you said you were going to do your hair. That's why you're happy. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. Oh, listen, love that. <laughs> he does date black women. That's how you know he dates black women. He listens. <laughs> <laughs> he listens. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, but that's it, word on road. I'll see what happens over the weekend. I'm hoping, yeah, man, let's just see what happens over the weekend because this week was crazy. Crazy week. But, yeah, let's get into people's journal, please. Did anybody pay Oh, mean, you mean like... Mean proper films. What's the last black film that was done? Do they do black films in general? Friday or something like that. Must, oh, must like be. those ones. Like, yeah, but you said I don't like Kevin Hart's films. They're not black films. They're black. What? You mean Soul like, Plane. Soul oh, so Plane you want an all Plane black was. cast? No. But like there's, a black there's, film. there's always white yeah. people in black films, but yeah. it's like... I think the best one, Holiday, was the last one. There must be more than that, though. We're just not hearing... We don't have them anymore. Well, I think like a man in that. Yeah, but okay. best one, Holiday... Was after the last thing, like a man. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. She we don't have be, those anymore, actually. Might be best man. Might be the last wow. one. We used to be a people. It was. Because I love films like that. Might be the yeah. one of those tonight, actually. When, when they did those films now, people start saying this, that, and the third. They say racist. He's racist, and you need to see the world differently and not just have a bollocks. But it's interesting, though, because if they're wanting to... <laughs> yeah, but if they're wanting to win... Because those films would win, win Oscars. And I think right now everyone's just trying to get ego. Mm-hmm. So would, that's the thing. We say when we win Oscars where you can. But then the investment... No, the colour purple. What, is that musical? No, was it a musical? I heard it was a musical. I uh, probably... Well, Actually, that was a musical. That yeah. Haley and Fantasia. Oh, wow. Someone must have been singing. I heard it was a musical. That don't count yeah, either. 
Bad I enough. want a feel good black film. I don't want to be talking about slavery and people people pick cotton and people are dealing with insult. I just want a good one. Two people in love, love Jones kind of vibe. Two people in love. Don't Ice Cube make those kind of movies. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he's a bit problematic at the moment, though, isn't he? No, Ice Cube. You need a no, Trump supporter. He's focused on the big three. Mm-hmm. That's right now, but what about like Ride Along and all that? And are we there yet? And all that? Ain't that black movie? Was that yeah, long ago? Was that too long ago? Yeah. That's time ago. Was that b- what before Best Friend? Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Are we there? Yet? It was like 2014. I think I was at uni. Uh, no, not Are We There? Yet? Sorry, Ride Along. Ride Along, yeah. That was like 2014, but Are We There? Yet? It was like when I was years ago. Mm. That was decades ago at this point. What about um them 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 was it Key and Pill whatever they're called? Oh, Jordan Pill. Mm. Yeah, but I don't is want that, to see does, that, does that count as black movies because he's a black man making it? Or are they no, not? it doesn't count as black. You know, because I feel like the kind of films you're talking about are like, like we can all sit together and mm. just have a good time and watch it. Jordan Peele's one, I've got to focus to know I might miss something because he did that one. What was that woman? Lupita. No, that woman. He did one. Mm. Is it Mama? What was it called? Mama or something like that? Mm-mm. It's a scary mm. one. Like Mama. It was it called Mama, right? Wasn't it? With the black woman? Yeah. And yeah. she got the kids and that. Yeah, so I wouldn't think of that as a black film. The film with a black woman in it. Yeah. A black film, I feel like for me, black films are like feel good films. I like old school Love Jones. Mm. Oh, love, 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 love Jones. And basketball and everything there. Above oh, the room. Lorenz yeah. Tate. I got the, yeah. the man. Times have changed, man. It's a shame. Times have changed. Everyone's out here trying to spread messages. Shut up. <laughs> just make me feel, I just let people feel good. I don't want to spread messages that way. Watch TDA for that. I think back then as well, people were just like, okay, cool, this is what we have. Let's mm. work with this. I think today everyone's trying to get into other circles. That's the thing. Trying to do this. I see. That's another thing. Yeah, because I suppose a lot of them black people don't want to make that, especially this director. Like, it's like it's like you're bit like pigeonholing me or putting me in a box. Like they mm-hmm. probably don't want to make that black films. They want to make films. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They want to be seen as yeah. directors in Hollywood across the board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not pushing me into this. And they do say that actually. Market kind yeah. of thing. So they do say that in all the interviews it. actually. Yeah. So when we when the consumers we want it. They're like, yeah, but it's restricting me in what I can do mm. professionally, which is crazy because why should, if I act as a comedian today, why should that be the only role I ever get to play in my life? Mm. Mm. Even the Bring It On days, those are fun. Anyway. You all should check out Chico and Rita. It's an animation. I watched it like some years ago with my Indian girlfriend. Is it a, f- <laughs> is it a film? Um, yeah, yeah, it's a movie. Okay. You like it? And it's black. Okay. Mm-hmm. The love story. Yeah. Oh, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> All right. People's Journal. Welcome to the People's Journal. Did I press it? I think it did. You did? Yeah. Well, I gave you the news from an economics point of view. I've right, got so People's the... Journal for you. Sorry. Hmm? Yeah, what happened? Sorry for interrupting. It's all right. So I saw a tweet here, yeah, and if someone says, it's a, someone in the UK, and she said, those in UK... Do not tweet or quote tweet any anti-black conservative MP. They are targeting black people with the Malicious Communications Act. At least 70 black people have been charged for even responding with an emoji. Spread the word. He said more info to follow soon. I don't know if this, if this is... You don't know if it's fake news? I don't or... know. because don't know yet. More info to follow is... Why didn't they just follow? <laughs> 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 I heard people say, I'll tell you more. Meet me back here at 7pm. No, <laughs> I'm already here. Mm. Let me know. Well, people, let us know, man. Do the Google's pull in the Discord, please. You know what I mean? Let's protect yeah. ourselves, you know? From the white gays. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, because again, you get got. T- I'm telling you, man. Damn white gays. <laughs> There's also a male gays, you know? Is it? Yeah. Learn about that in sociology. There's a female gays? No, there's no female gays. Yes, there is. There must be. There isn't. To be fair, the, the male In gaze. order of um <laughs> listen, in order in order sorry. That was what they said. Yep, never mind. In the order of the people that in what they think is the order of importance in society mm-hmm. is white people, then men, dogs, then women. Women are always the last. There's no female gaze. <laughs> There's no fem- but why would there be a female gaze though? Because milk is essentially it's, it's about women trying to like do things to get men's attention. Men don't really be doing like because the way society is like we should be auditioning for men's attention and we should put ourselves out there. Da, 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 da. There's no need for female gays because men just get to exist. Okay. Yeah. This is what I'm telling you what the study says. Uh, this is not my words. <laughs> 
this is not from me. This is not a message from me. I'm just reporting what I studied. Mm-hmm. So, you know. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have a look. Put it in the Discord and all that. First thing I wanted to mention, man, Sainsbury's, they've revealed plans they're going to be cutting jobs. 1,500 roles are going to be gone. So, yeah. Damn. If you work at Sainsbury's, um, do you Suck do, up to your manager. You know what I'm saying? Do your due diligence. Make sure you're not one of those mm. unlucky few, well, unlucky many, I should say, man. Um, next thing I wanted to mention is, what was it? House prices, man. They're starting to rise again. Apparently, for the first time in over a year, house prices are now more expensive than they were 12 months previously. High mortgage bills have kind of gone down a bit for homes. Um, so, yeah, it seems like people feel like, okay, you know what? This might be a good time. To be fair, a few days ago, or well, early this week, um, a lot of um, lenders put up their mortgage rates again. Mm. So it went down since the beginning of this year. Everyone's kind of just been dropping yeah. them like crazy. But it kind of spiked up a bit. Um, so yeah, so I, I don't know what that means for the long term. But again, we're, we're going to have to see, hopefully next week, I believe it is, when the Bank of England guys come together to decide um, the fate of the current um, base rate. He also talked about um, hobbits. Oh, was it? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You love it. Uh, uh, I'm going to definitely tune into that. But if you check the doc here, there's something that I want you to play, if you don't mind. Um... You remember last week we were talking about Chuck and Lonely, and you lot were saying you oh, yeah. never heard of Chuck and Lonely. Mm. People I in the chat were saying some. it's there, it's there, man. Well, we have you may have some uh, more reason to actually try it. So this this first video someone mm-hmm. sent to me, big up um, Mama Squeeze. That that's her. That's her <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Mama Squeeze. <laughs> I'll say it just once. <laughs> 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 I was trying to get it <laughs> But yeah, she sent this to me. This and was is like, the Yo, weirdest chocolate in the up. world. It's shaped in a weird way, unlike other brands on purpose. But why? They're called Tony's Chocolonely. And it was founded by TV presenter Tony. And he's been so dedicated to his cause that he sued himself for buying chocolate from plantations that used slaves in 2006. Okay. Most chocolate are made with slave mm-hmm. labor and child exploitation. And Tony decided it was time to change that. The bars have unequal chunks to symbolize the inequality in the chocolate industry. The bottom of the bars represents the equator. The chunks above are the Gulf of Guinea. From left to right, you have Ivory Coast, Ghana, Togo, and Benin, Nigeria, and part of Cameroon, which are the places most exploited for these huge chocolate corporations. They only have one goal, and goal only, and it's to make all chocolate 100% slave-free, not just their own. You know what? There you go. I'm going to get myself a bar after this. Love that. So, obviously, when I, when I got out food, let me make sure it's real. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, obviously, some of the detail about the countries and all that type of stuff, I'm not too sure if that is 100% factual. Mm-hmm. But I did go to their website, and 100%, like it says in that um, video, mm-hmm. they are trying to get... Um, they're basically 100% slave free. They want to make chocolate 100% slave free. Yeah. Long story, so basically. Um, so literally, they have a mission statement, they have everything on their website. So if you're interested, go to um, tonyschocolonely.com and you see everything. They're talking about the problem, they're talking about what it is, modern slavery. Um, they're talking about the roadmap to um, 100% slave free chocolate and all the things they're trying right now and have been trying for um, for the longest while to make sure that um, chocolate is slave free because obviously a lot of people back home are being exploited to this day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they're doing a, they're doing a good work, man. When you go to their um their team, it's like 90% white people. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm the Tony. Because I was with him when he sued himself for exploiting <laughs> black people. I said, oh, that's a menace and the business. But then it needs to be reflected on the board. So. No, but to be fair, I think it's, it may be down to where he is as well. And people are obviously interested in the skill for the job. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I think they are um, based in Netherlands. I believe so. I'm not too sure. Okay. Um, so, yeah. He must have been high when he did that. <laughs> but, yeah, they're, they're really, they're, they are really trying, man. Again, let me just read a bit about the problem. Things aren't being shared evenly in the chocolate supply chain. The chain starts with millions of farmers who produce cocoa and ends with billions of consumers who enjoy the chocolate. But what about the bit in the middle? The section is dominated by a handful of chocolate giants that profit from keeping the price of cocoa um, as low as possible. As a result, farmers are forced to live in poverty, and that leads to illegal child labor and modern slavery. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm. And again, next part, they're talking about modern slavery. Right now, there's a modern slave, there is modern slavery on cocoa farms in West Africa. Exactly. There's a result of, this is the result, pardon me, of the unequally divided cocoa chain. Tony's truck alone exists to change that. Illegal child labor and modern slavery are against the law. It needs to stop. So again, mm. there's a lot of information on their page, man. So big up Tony's truck alone, man. And the reason why they were getting sued the other day mm. is because obviously they were kind of um, mocking the other um, chocolate brands out there, innit? you know what I'm saying? With um, with the way they designed their their chocolate for a certain period of time. I can't remember what they, their initiative was. Um, I think they were saying, yeah, they were saying pay farmers, don't pay law, don't pay lawyers, you know what I'm something okay, like that, yeah. Because yeah. obviously, obviously they were getting um, sued for apparently um, copying somebody's um, branding um, design and whatnot. But anyway, long story short, cut story short. Um, yeah, Tony, Tony's Chocolonely seem like they're legit, man. You know what I'm saying? So big up Tony's Chocolonely. Right, At least they care. Yeah, you know but I'll be honest with you, I hope the truck is not dead. Yeah. If it is, then good cause and all, but I've like, tried it. It's not though. Uh, it's, it's like it's like um like a solid, you know, like um like Yorkie. Exactly. Exactly. But they've got bare different flavors. I've only tried one flavor to be fair, that's ages ago. But they've got mm. like bare different flavors. How long ago did you try it? Ages ago. Before you became vegan? Yeah, for, for sure. No, really good, man. I knew that's where he was going. Exactly. I, knew that, I knew that's where he was going. Stays ready, boy. <laughs> Ruby Wednesday said that the orange one is the best. Okay. That's the yeah. salted caramel. Okay. Don't. And somebody sent me a video for you, Esther. Do you have a cookies, a cookies and cream one? That's my vibe. A dog Hosanna, video. Hosanna. Blessed be your name. Now, see, this morning, I asked you to pray. You don't even pray. I said, don't pray. I anoint all of you. Now, blessing go follow now in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys should say amen. They should have never left Glory in Jesus' name. <laughs> Everyone. Amen. So, this is Make whatever you are looking for. They're going to go to heaven. <laughs> the dogs. Yeah. The dogs are not saying amen. No, but he's going to knock them. The dogs we're are thinking about ass, you. and you're thinking they're going to heaven. Ozan. The Nigerians having animals is the Look funniest that. thing. Look, that's anointing oil in the, in the bottle. Just putting oil on the seat and the floor for what? Hey, you anointed the dogs. They're going to be in your house. They're going to be anointed. There was someone in Nigeria the other day asked them um, on Twitter, asked, basically talking about how like things are so expensive now. They're like, oh, like cat food is so expensive. Mm -hmm. The replies to it was the funniest thing. That like, Nigerians are just. You were like cat food. Don't you just give it ever. Like, don't you just give it this. Don't you just give it. It's too funny, man. But yeah, man. All the best. It's funny. I saw an animal the other day, actually. There's a picture on and I saw, oh, like, do people actually think this has a soul? What an ugly looking mm. thing. But I thought, oh, it's got a soul, apparently. Mm, something. <laughs> um, next thing I want you to, to thingy, Brent. There's another link in there. If you don't mind playing it. Chocolony. And this is basically about Disney. You remember? I think, yeah, just today you were talking about Disney, isn't it? Oh, this is the movie that they, <coughs> yeah. they showed. Apparently, this is really, really good. Ooh, I like this. It was you. I, I think I'm. Um, you Heather, said that perfectly. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm Heather, so proud. But I've, I've, I'm dating a Nigerian babe right now. Okay, then. A Yoruba mm -hmm. babe, you've got to say. Yeah, be specific, man. And she Yoruba. is white. Yes. <laughs> God forbid. I stuff her a lot. <laughs> is it a woman on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, to cover every base. <laughs> Nigerian stories being told, but Nigerians can't listen to their own stories. The children's series Iwaju is Disney's first animation collaboration in a hundred years. And it's with a Nigerian animation studio. Iwaju is based in futuristic Lagos, Nigeria, and is produced by Walt Disney Animation Studios and the Pan-African Entertainment Company, Ugali Media. Iwaju, meaning the future, takes viewers on a journey into the world of Tola, a young girl from a wealthy island. With her best friend Kole, she's a self-taught tech expert. Lagos is known to be the culture capital of Nigeria, with its mainland and island areas inspiring the movie with its creativity and spirit. Here's the catch though. Disney Plus is not available in Nigeria. That means while people in the US and UK can watch the film on its release date, February 28th, 
Nigerians can't. It's great that Nigeria is being represented, but they need to be able to watch the series too. Nigerian stories are being told, but Nigerians can't listen to their own stories? Why are Nigerian stories yeah. being told? Here's the thing, right? Nigeria has a lot going on at the moment. I think this is great representation. This is wonderful and all that. But then Disney Plus then going to introduce themselves there. People are going to have to pay for that. So, do you mean that? I think mm. it's, a, it's an interesting fight. What do you mean? Say again? It's an interesting fight because mm. you say Nigerians can't listen to their stories. But what it is mm. is that Nigerians can't pay to listen to their stories. Mm. I don't know how much better that is than them not listening to their stories. Mm. And um, for the, for, and to be fair, I'm gonna lot, watch that though. For so those can... who have access, a lot a lot of Nigerians they have VPNs as well. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they have access to Netflix all over the world. Mm. So they have access to this dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at least we can everyone can watch it, man. But that's really cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it this weekend actually. That's really really cool. Yeah. Hopefully love they, that. hopefully it's a, it's a good job, man. Oh, that made me really excited. I love that. Yeah, Heather said it's amazing. Oh, oh nice. Dope. Dope. And we do listen to Heather, so mm-hmm. take a word for it. Um, who loves Heather? The woman that swims swims in a pond in in the cold. When Rich was talking about taking cold showers, she swims in a pond. Oh, for white women? No, she's black. <laughs> Heather's a black woman. No, but she said she was she's the only black person there or something. Yes, I think she was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to mention is, firstly, big up Mel for my baker. Big up Mel for my baker. <laughs> Every, every time. Yo, baby, we need a two. But I need to lose weight. Yo, baby. I've been wanting to message her like, can I place an order? But I'm like, I need <laughs> to have abs. Oh, Mel. She is thriving. We got Mel. She mentioned me about something else, but mm-hmm. hope you don't mind, Mel, me saying. Um, Are you asking a person on air? It's going to be listening to this while she's making figure what? Because, because it's only positive. Oh, lovely. She's, she says she had the busiest January on record. <laughs> Girl with cakes like that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Deserved. So we're super happy for you, man. Big up Mel, man. 100%. But she messaged just to, um, I guess, contribute for uh, people's journey and basically let the people know that on Uber Eats, right? Mm-hmm. Some of you may know already, but um, every Monday you yeah. can get 50% off fresh fruit and veg. All the stores that take okay. part, Sainsbury's, Iceland, Asda, Co-op, um, what's this, GoPuff, Waitrose, all of them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you if you get your veg, get it on Uber Eats. And I do get like a hard price. Fruits, actually. You know what I'm saying? So m- wait for Monday, man. Just get it for the week. Um, yeah. And if you've got Uber One membership, um, you can get extra 5% off okay. as well. That's I ain't promoting Uber One, but you know what I'm trying to say. Thank you, you so, yeah. So thank you, Mel, for that. Oh, Appreciate the, it. On. Love that. What well, babe? 100%. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for people's journey, you know? All right, man. Let's get into our last headline for today. Is everything right there? <laughs> <laughs> well, next headline. Brain. Trigger warning on this one for oh. people who are going to be triggered by this. Um, oh, yeah. Ghana, <laughs> Ghana. <laughs> we spoke about this yesterday. Dear, dear Ghana. And I guess they would have been anticipating the backlash, to be fair. Oh, 100%. You know what I'm saying? But obviously, they didn't give a damn. But um, a bill which criminalizes LGBTQ plus people and their supporters in Ghana drew international condemnation yesterday after it was passed by parliament with the United Nations calling it profoundly disturbing and urging for it to not become law. In a statement, Ravina Shamdasani, pardon me, spokesperson for the Office of UN High Commissioner, said that the bill broadens the scope of criminal sanctions against lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people simply by being who they are and threatens criminal penalties against those perceived as their allies. She also said that consensual same-sex conduct should never be criminalized. The bill, if it becomes law, will be corrosive and will have a negative impact on society as a whole. The bill, which was voted through by Parliament in the West African nation on Wednesday, was first introduced three years ago. It criminalizes relationships, sexual activity, and public displays of affection between members of the LGBTQ plus community. It also targets their supporters and the promotion of funding of LGBTQ plus related activities. Those convicted could face up to a decade in prison. Um, the bill has been sent to the president's desk to be signed into law. Next headline. This is about yesterday. Remember yesterday we were talking about um, Kate Middleton and... Where she's at? <laughs> yeah. Big up Taser. Send me a thread, yeah. And mm. I just thought... And actually, yeah. So I said... I was in Taser. I think, yeah. Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. I think she might have been pregnant. And she lost the baby. 
Okay. Because when mm. I went through the thread and the way she's missing from this and da 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 da, I think that could be it. Mm. I don't think it's a fringe trying to grow out. Well, let's see what the palace says. So they've released a statement. Oh, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> they're lying, yeah, man. They they're lying because they seen the TikToks. People are very involved. They're very involved in social media, you know. I've never known white people to lie, so I want to give them a chance. Thank you very much. So, as this is shaking in the boots. <laughs> <laughs> the palace has released a statement addressing speculation and conspiracy theories. They heard everything, you know. I, they see everything. They, I'm telling you about Kate Middleton's whereabouts in a statement to Page Six. Uh, the Princess of Wales rep said Kensington Palace made it clear in January the timelines of the princess, princess's recovery and would only be providing significant dates. That, guide, that guidance stands. They added that Kate is doing well. He has been concerned about Kate's health since the palace announced that she had undergone planned abdominal surgery on January 17th. At the, same, at the time, they made it clear that based on the current medical advice, she's unlikely to return to public duties until after Easter. Right? There's... A lot to um, this statement. You know, let me just read it. So basically, Her Royal Highness, the Prince, Princess of Wales, was admitted to hospital yesterday for planned um, abdominal surgery. The surgery was successful and it's expected that she'll remain in hospital for 10 to 14 days before returning home to recover to, to continue her recovery. Based on the current medical advice, she's unlikely to return to public duties until after Easter. The Princess of Wales appreciates the interest the statement will generate. She hopes that the public will understand her desire to maintain as much normality for her children as possible and her wish that her personal medical information remains private. Kensington Palace will therefore only provide updates on Her Royal Highness's progress when there is significant new information to share. The Princess of Wales wishes um, to apologise to all those concerned for the fact that she has to postpone her upcoming engagements. She looks forward to reinstating as many as possible as soon as possible. And the last headline, um, you know what, funny, I even forgot to mention this yesterday. And this is about um, Jam Master J, man. So the godson and the childhood friend of Run DMC star Jam Master J has, have been um, convicted of his murder in New York mm. more than two decades ago. So Carl Jordan Jr., 40, and Ronald Washington, 59, targeted the musician at his re recording studio after being cut out of a drug deal. This is the reason why they did it. So the hip-hop pioneer, real name Jason Mizell, was 37 when he was shot in the head in Queens on the 30th of October 2002. It's 22 years ago. Jordan Washington now faced 20 years to life in prison. Um, yeah, Washington, hmm, God just killed two innocent people. This is what Washington yelled out at in the jury after the guilty verdict, according to the Associated Press. Jordan's um, supporters also began shouting and cursed the jury. The prosecutor said that Jordan, Mizell's um, godson, and Washington, a childhood friend who was staying with Mizell's sister, thought that they were going to be part of a drug deal that was worth $200,000. And they were angry that they got cut out of it. That's the story, basically. And that's it for the headlines, guys. Time to pay the bills. Sorry, I'm a bit slow. Mm. I'm just looking at the Kate Middleton thing again, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, this statement, that was from ages ago, then. Yeah, I think that's the, the that's background. before Christmas. Yeah. Okay. That's just the background. Okay. So, that's why the guy was basically saying, we told you back then that she ain't going to be da -da 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 until this particular day. Mm. That sounds right. <laughs> that sounds right. We went home, really. <laughs> she's, that's what they're saying, anyway. Okay. All right. Let's get into reaction, then. Mm-hmm. Who's that one? Whoa. Oh. Um, I'll do that leaked footage last one, is that? You might need to do it first, you know. Is it? Just right. in case it comes off the internet. Oh, press it, Brent. Mm -hmm. It's a YouTube link, though, but it might be worth it, Brent. What is this? I don't know. Tank. This is Haney. Tank? Tank. <laughs> As in the singer? Tank. No. The... I can make you love me, Tank. No, the real Tank. Oh. The, only, the only Tank that matters. Javante. Davis. First of all, it matters to you. <laughs> the only tank I think of is I can't make you love me, tank. <laughs> They're the same height as well. You wouldn't think it. Is it? <laughs> oh, dear. You know, let me just give some background knowledge here. Background info. Basically, um, Garcia is going to be fighting Haney, right? And there's been information from prior to that fight about what happened during the spa, isn't it? So people have been talking about it. Um, Haney's dad spoke about it. Um, what's his name? Adrian Broner spoke about it. And now it's been leaked, man. 
It's what happened in their spa. Oh, yeah, I need to see this. Yeah. Haney was <laughs> literally on the ropes. Tank's not a joke, though. I'm telling you. Tank is not Tank a joke. Tank is my guy, man. Flipping Don't run. Hell. Don't run. He's fixing him up. <laughs> The only thing I don't like about Tank is he thinks he's me. That's the only <laughs> thing. That's the only thing I can't stand about him. Try to take all my moves. Whew. Man jumped in, you know. I said, yeah. allow it. And what's funny is... How um, old is this footage? Ooh, I'm not too sure, you know. It's, it's quite a few years, though. Because this is at um, Mayweather's gym. Apparently, they spar, they spar twice. Yeah, he's on him. And funny enough, yeah, um, Broner, in, in his story, he said, I had to jump in to actually save Haney. So when you're seeing it now, you can mm. tell he was telling the truth. So yeah, Haney was in trouble, man. So Yeah, no, you don't want no parts of the shoot still. <laughs> to be fair, Haney's a lot bigger now. He's like at 140 now. And Tank, I don't think he wants to go up to 140. Mm. Because um, last time Haney uh, went to 140, his last fight against... What was his last fight against? Progray, Regis Progray. Um, he hydrated up to like 165. Mm. Something like that, like 165 or something, even more than that. So yeah, man, he's going to be too big. He might be too big for Tank, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, this this was from, um, you know, a long time ago or whatever, but still. All right, cool. That looks interesting. Well, we've only got two headlines here for you today. One is about Paul Pogba, because the Juventus midfielder has been banned for four years hmm. after the World Cup winner tested positive for doping. What does that mean, Mags? What do you mean? A footballer doping. How does it give them a competitive edge? What, by taking dope. drugs? Yeah. Could be anything. Strength, speed, stamina. Yeah. Concentration. Yeah, it could be anything. You can, you can take AIDS to help your physical performance. AIDS? AIDS, yeah. Oh, okay. To aid your performance, sir. No, I don't know what he means now when he said AIDS. Huh? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what. The Liverpool boys do it. They take asthma pumps. Mm -hmm. To get more oxygen in lungs? Yeah, make them run longer and that. They all, they all got asthma. Is this, is this common knowledge? You could, if, you do, if you do enough Googles, I think you could find, you could find you'll probably find a story or two. But it's not it. illegal? So it must be like a loophole. No, if they've got asthma, they've got asthma. <laughs> all of them have asthma. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> But if there's properties in asthma that help the lungs and the lung capacity yeah. and whatnot, 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 in it. But apparently all of them got asthma. Yeah, they've got steroids in the inhalers. Yeah. Opens up your, your vessels. Yeah. More oxygen than that. Mm -hmm. But this might seem silly. But remember when um, Vieira always used to put... Vicks, Vicks on his, on his chest. chest. Was it allowed? Yeah, it was allowed, yeah. Mm -hmm. Open up your chest. Someone to rob, it? man. This Everyone be performing high, boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, that cold outside is mad. Wow. Anyway, Juventus midfielder Paul Pogba has been given a four-year ban after the World Cup winner tested positive for doping. Um, Italy's National Anti-Doping Tribunal accepted the request for Anti-Doping Prosecutor's Office to hand out the four-year ban, which is the standard length for a ban under the World Anti-Doping Code. Uh, the ban starts from when Paul was first tested positive, so France International is banned until August 2027. He will be 34 years old when the band stops raising doubts over whether his career will continue after that. In a statement from Pogba, he confirmed he would appeal the decision of, at, court of, at the Court of Arbitration of Sport. He added he would tell the full story um, when I am free of legal restrictions. Um, and here we have Eric Ten Hag demands full apology over Bruno Fernandes' TikTok and more protection for his captain. So Man United boss Eric Ten Hag has demanded Fulham apologise for, for a mocking TikTok they made of Bruno Fernandes and called for officials to provide more protection of his captain. Fulham's official TikTok account pokes fun at Fernandes over a perceived dive in Saturday's win at United. I did not know about the video, he said. If they did this, I would say it's not right. It's absolutely not right. It's not right for the club to make such statements. They should apologise for this. And in our last headline... Lakers star approaching 40,000 career points. So LeBron James is currently 40 points away from 40,000 career points. With a season average of 25 points per game, he should reach the milestone early in early March. 
James scored 34 points in Wednesday's 116 to 112 victory over the Clippers, including 19 in the fourth quarter as the Lakers rallied from 21 down. Oh, shit. I need to go watch that. James will be all over the NBA um, record books when all is said and done as he seeks to become the first player to ever score 40,000 points. Sounds like a good game. I need to go and take that in. Um, yeah, and that is the end of our headlines. Let's get into done here. There you go. What these these headlines are done at is? Yeah, like yeah, we just choose one of them. Stories. Yeah. Well like some oh the summer. The links, the links are there. Oh. You know what? Oh, those are the summaries of what happened. That's kinda helpful actually. I wanna play mm. a video because it might be in keeping. Well it's not in keeping, but the mic can relate. The Should first say, one is a big business. True say we've been doing it in the racial stuff. If I play a video that's got music on it, would it be alright or would it flag? Because I wanna play it. I don't know what the song is. Probably will flag, but I will just mute it when it is and do the upload afterwards. All right, come in. Let's go. Let me send you something. Sorry, Brent. Because <sighs> I've seen something that's been causing a lot of um thing online. Oh gosh, have I seen that? I don't know. Well, you know what? It's been getting mixed responses, but in certain corners, in certain demographics, in certain cultures, they've been upset about what they saw. Okay. And I was, well, I just want you to watch it to see what kind of feelings it evokes in you. Okay. I mean, after this video, I'm probably never going to beat these charges, but I'm sorry. No, I think you're ready then. Hmm? I think you're ready then. <laughs> Play the video, please. It's only a few minutes long. It was making people really angry. No, she loves it. Yeah, her parents are pissed off with her. Is this cultural appropriation or something? Yeah, we're dancing. We're just having fun here. Yeah. People are so angry about this. Hey, girl. Listen, what? Listen, let me tell you, yeah. A night out is a... Yeah, they're going to have a fun. A night out is a fun time. What are these pants that they're wearing? I like them. I think it's where they're going. Huh? I think it's for where they're going. Look at that, hold that. Is this like an um, electric slide, like a candy thing? Yeah, it is. That's me. Oh, you're chicken there. The remix. I like this. This is fun. Is that thing you drive to, right? Yes! People are angry. Is it cultural cooperation, bro? Hey. I need to know what the song is first of all. That'll get me going. Right, it's 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 I thought they were shaking their toes over something. That's big of them, man. Okay, bro. The topic guy, not bro. Just awesome. No, he sped it up. That's it. This is the, 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 the extent of it. Is this what it is? That's it. I've seen this. Yeah. What, what's been backlash though? Black people have been upset with them. Why? What? What? Are they saying it's black moves? I think it's because they're doing black moves, listening to black what music. What are you talking about? I don't know. I was trying to find out whether there was grounds or not. I need to read someone's replies because maybe you are not basically positioning this feedback properly. That It's been on for days, so there's, got, there's, there's loads of replies. So I don't know what you're going to find. One but thing's for sure and two things for certain, right? There's people, the white girls are a lot of fun. There's people bitter about that, them. about that video and I wasn't, I wasn't sure why, so I thought maybe if I bring it to this no, platform, man. music could tell me why. I am here for the girls. This is Mardi Gras in Louisiana. Where is that where they are? Louisiana? Yeah. You see Mardi the Louisiana Gras. whites? You know they're the Cajuns and that? They got they're like spicy a bit. Okay. So maybe that's 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 maybe that's just their culture. Wings? Maybe that's just their culture. Maybe that's just what they do. Mm. But if, <sighs> this is chicken. You sound progressive. Is Christy happy with that? I'm just honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's 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 go to Christy. Let's yeah, go to Christy, she's man. Christy, what's she, what's she saying in the chat? Did I she, swear to did God, she KMT when it came yes, on. Yes, Christy did yes, not. There was people that was disgruntled by that video, and I, for the life of me, I'm thinking, why? Right. I hope Christy's in a work call, man. Christy, I need you for this. Uh, the artist won't be upset. <laughs> so, trust me, Christy. Christy, I, Christy, I don't think Christy. I think Christy's left the chat. She'll be back. 
Let me see if it's anybody in the chat like angry. That. I'm you. That's why I wanted to bring it to the she platform. I know it's predominantly in her, in her spirit. Predominantly black people <laughs> on the platform. I wanted to bring it to the platform to see whether anybody in these circles no, share man. the same sentiments. They're just having a great time. Even if they listen to you, what's the what's the most blackest song there is? I don't care as long as they don't say the n word. I'm always good with things because like, they're just having a good time. Louisiana hands down got the blackest white people in the world. <laughs> <laughs> that bad? Black there you have it. When they see white people doing black shit. You let them live. Why is what's it black, black shit stuff? to dance? It's, what's the black stuff? Yeah, what's the black stuff? Dancing. Like, why is the one black people? Oh, you mean the moves? Is it the moves then? Is that what they're saying? Is that what they call him? Black moves. <laughs> isn't it? What's it? Isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Stump. Fergie or what's her name? Stump. That's talking about my hump, my hump, my hump. This is what that's giving. But do these woman. artists actually do dances along with their music and then put it out there for TikTok? For TikTok to, to do and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So isn't this just them? I don't know. That's clearly some kind of routine because they're all doing the same thing. Christy says she don't care and it's for the black Americans to fight. Ah. Oh, so she does have a problem with So it. she does have a problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how would, would y'all feel if there's Afrobeats going on yeah. and they're doing the Afrobeats moves and stuff? No, I don't care about that. My only problem with all of that stuff is when we start to praise them and put them on a pedestal. Mm. No, okay, but if they start doing it, everyone's like, oh my gosh. That's a strong question though. If it was an Afrobeats but and, they, and they were doing African dances. We didn't care. I love that. I love that you guys are having fun. My issue will be when people are like, oh my gosh, let's have them in interviews and oh my gosh, they're the best dancers in the world. That's my issue. My issue is when we praise white people for doing things that black people do that we never give black people flowers for doing. That's my issue. But other than that, people can have fun. Have fun. I sing Taylor Swift around the house sometimes. I don't see anyone outside, outside my door policing me. And I think that's the thing. With, with music and arts and stuff like that, if you enjoy it without claiming it as your own, it's fine. Because white... That's what there's... Black people love Spice Girls. Yeah. Love Justin Timberlake and all them people. They're white. True. They don't tell you at the concerts you're not allowed in or why are you singing so passionately. Let the girls have fun, man. And white girls are so much fun when you go out on a night out. I love that part of my night out when I bump into white girls. A group of, a group of them. They're good vibes, man. Very fun. Very fun. So let the girls have fun with their funky, with their funky trousers, man. <laughs> their fringe trousers. And they all got your cups as well. There you have... Lick it up. I'm not even sure what's going on. I think, I don't know. It's was like that... a street, like a block party. I don't know. It but... like a block party. But then I was like, why is not more people? Because it felt like, why are more people involved? There was no black people there. Does that matter? Nah. Because it's where they are. It's just, just theirs. Mm. Just their yeah, thing. I mean. The immature reviewer, the, the one who has an ex white um, boyfriend, um, the, the dog sleeper. Yeah, 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 when yeah, you said yeah. the ex no, that's not, that's not what I know her for. She surely doesn't have a problem with it. She's the one who sleeps in no, She said that if it was Afrobeats, it would piss her off. Okay. She said if it was Afrobeats music, it would piss her off. Yeah. It would piss Why? Me, it would piss me off or her off. Her yeah. off, she said. It would yeah. piss her off. Why? Why? What, with, with, with white boyfriends as well? Yeah, but don't you... Okay. <laughs> and I, I just don't get the... Yeah, but don't you want your people to like... Don't you want their sounds... Don't you want it to be international? <laughs> Don't you want Asha Care to be global? <laughs> if they listen, if I saw them doing the Joha dance, right? Asha <laughs> Care dance, I'll be so happy. I bet Asha Care, you can have a concert there. This There's a it. market there. Mm-hmm. They will make money, man. Listen, they're backing that thing up. Big up the girls. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> so, one of the um, commenters said that they probably learned how to bend their knees while bouncing on a BBC. <laughs> Well, uh, that don't mean Boba Chelsea that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the BBC is talking about. Well, to her, they do they, they do look like they, they dabble. <laughs> <laughs> they just they did a stick. You saw of nothing women. from to, from that video to say that they dabble. I promise you, they do. I you, promise you. Saw you, enough, you saw I enough. promise you. You think they dabble? There's a look. Yeah, sure That's a there's a look. White That's girls that. Predominantly date black men look like. But yeah. run that video off to me one more second because I was I wasn't looking with those eyes. Okay, let me no, check. Let's spot them. Let's see if you got a little tingly sense. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> let me see if my sense is tingle. Let me see. Fair, because... fair, fair, fair. Let's let's run it again. I'll let you know which one of them's got black boyfriends. Let's go. Let's run it again. Or black links at the very least. Let's Do you think? Hundred percent. That's all stereotypes. So because they're dancing with rhythm, yes, they like they black men. Yes, they are stereotypes. Yeah, she's got a white boyfriend. <laughs> These these look like they got white boy. Look at this one here. That one. She does this. Yeah, yeah. Wait, this is the this one. No, not her. None of these. See, no. like, none of these. 
There's one in particular I saw and I said, This one, 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 What is this routine? It looks lit though. I think you and your girls need to learn this next time. I would say this thing. <laughs> Summertime. This, this can, yeah, see, I think that's just. I think you can't tell women what food they're sleeping from there. You said this one. Look at look at the, this one in pink. Look, look, what? Listen, 100%. Uh, yeah. Listen. She knows what time it is. She's, she's, she's open to it. She's more of a mixed race yeah, she, guy. She, she, she'll go. She's more of a mixed race guy. She's, she's still with Chadwick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, she needs sandwich. I don't understand what these trousers are. I think they were going, yeah, I think they designed it like, like Barthes t shirts. It says shaking for the camera, and they're doing exactly that. This okay. is lit, man. Max, I don't understand you. I'm going to learn the moves. I'm going to be slow jams. I don't understand Watch. you, man. What do you find in these people, bro? What do you see in these people? Hey, bro? hey, hey. Let's huh? not do that. What? 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 <laughs> There was nothing wrong with that. There was unbridled white joy. There was nothing wrong with. I said, "What do you see in these people? <laughs> Humans. You probably oh, think they. Ass. You probably think they ain't got souls as well. I don't miss it. They have many white friends. Mm -mm. It's not. It's not. It's not far fetched. That's not far. No, they have souls. My first girlfriend was white. That's not far fetched for you, so. Well, so she was half Indian, half white. Have a soul? <laughs> 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 yeah. White people have souls. Everyone, and animals don't. Humans okay. do. They're selling are you all the sick? Time. What do you mean animals don't? Are you comparing? Are you comparing? <laughs> are you comparing? Animals to white people. Yes. <laughs> Let's get into our um. Quick. Out of <laughs> Who's getting done out here? Mugs. Anyone that had a problem with unbridled white joy? Yeah, mm. man. They're just it's, it's just a white women joy. Von <laughs> says she probably went asked a mouth with her brother. She <laughs> what? <laughs> What? Sorry, what? Uh, let me put it out. I don't want to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> crazy. Bro, I couldn't I believe when I said that. <laughs> stupid questions. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. Now, here we go. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. Stupid questions. <laughs> I know the bed is undefiled, right? You get you know the, what? the bed is undefiled. I mean, you can get up to anything. It's what it says in the Bible. I'm talking about Bible scripture. Okay. Right now, really. it's like you're allowed to do whatever. Right. Once it is that you're married. Yes. But this whole, what is depicted in this comment, right? Would you do it to your wife? Hmm? What? She said, I don't know that. I don't go down there. You gotta hit the outro. Not in sickness and health. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. But I think that I'm men never gonna quicker do it to somebody who they aren't looking to be committed to. Because what is ass to mouth? Sorry, maybe I'm missing this. Basically, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is it eating ass and they're going to kiss somebody? No, you put the willy in the bum and then you take it out of the bum and you put it in the mouth. <laughs> yep, yep. It's as it says on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Yes, yes and I'm sorry. I am sorry that now you're, there's an image in your head. Oh, I'm so innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so shocked. And he's done it before. <laughs> he was playing. What? Don't want the phone, sir. ATM. 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 <laughs> that was for the correction. <laughs> like, you actually got me crying. Oh, this man. is foolishness. <laughs> this is terrible. I'm man. shocked. This is a family show, man. So I told you, I can't <laughs> figure <laughs> one out, man. Used to be. I can't figure one out. Eighty <laughs> minutes for the kids are hard, watching, man. man. This is just not. I'm actually. I never. I didn't know that's what that was. <laughs> it said it. It said. It said like, no, it, it but said I it. my mind is not like y'all. It said it. It doesn't matter what it says. My mind yeah. isn't that sexually she open like that. It was the kiss I'm very vanilla. The booty hole. 
and then kiss. Yeah, and then lips. and then lips after. So ah, I was like, oh, like, same. okay. I'm very vanilla. Like I don't know all these things. Same. Thank God, <laughs> I'm sanctified. Amen. <laughs> what? This is terrible. Yeah, even though God said have sex, I don't think that he meant in the way some of y'all be doing it. One of them I think it's still a sin, even in marriage. On Mendy, try to say that. Remember, he busted the case. <laughs> and I knew it as well. Ask to math. You know, oh, no chance. Like, <laughs> he just lied. Oh, nah, man. man. I, I do think some of you guys, even though you're in marriage having sex, are still sitting. I don't think, I don't think a lot of things human beings have started to do was on God's heart. Mm. Yeah, you destroyed the whole city for all that stuff, innit? Because, wow. No, not for that stuff. That's yes, it was. It was for other stuff. That's what right. stuff do you think Solomon Gomorrah was um, destroyed for? ATM. All stuff. ATM, definitely. <laughs> definitely <laughs> ATM. <laughs> definitely. That was one of the top, that was one of the top things. Yeah, but there they were humans AT- over there. Yeah, but they weren't ATM in They was robbing, thieves, murdering, the, 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 there were scoundrels in that city, but ATM was at the <laughs> top of the, of the issues in those cities. Sodomy was a serious thing in Sodom. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you equate ATM with... Sodomy? Oh, you're just talking about Willie and Bum. Yes. It was Willie and Man's Bum. Hmm? That's what I said. It wasn't heterosexual not, yeah. ATM. You've got it twisted. No, it wasn't just... Um, and they tried to put... They tried to do it to the angels, angels. too. There was, heterosexual, there was heterosexual acts that was even... Because that was illegal. There was heterosexual stuff going on in there as well. It wasn't just homosexual activities. There was orgy in and thing. It was there was. Are you mad? It wasn't just homosexuals in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was all. It was everybody. No one was in there. It was everybody keeping up with fuckeries. Be fair, That's why I had to burn. Yeah, That's was... why I had, it had to go, Brent. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. No, that, I had um, to go. The straw oh. that, that broke, broke the camel's back. back was ATM. <laughs> oh. Was when they tried to do. Noreen, to don't ask me questions. And look at Triple Eight in there. Tried Noreen, to the angels. <laughs> I, I, I hate people ask stuff like that. I'm just like, hey, hey, don't drag me into your. Talking about why did God put our pleasure there? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I don't know, ma'am. That's above me. I do, it's a boy above me. <sighs> Y'all are nasty, man. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Uh, let's get into our actual please. Please. If you actually look at sex as an act holistically, yeah. Like outside of you participating in it, it's a very <laughs> animalistic act. Lala said you'd be surprised what I'm into. Is that what she said? I yeah. thought she was wholesome, to be honest. Like very wholesome. Sometimes the most people, the people you think that are wholesome, mm. except me, obviously, because I really am. But typically, you think that. Anyway, you're a nasty. Thank you for staying with us Monday to Friday. Well, yeah, Monday to Friday this week. We appreciate it. I'm seeing actually, we might have it was. I think the week's going to start with a bang next week. Basically, I'm seeing Kelsey, who is Megan Thee Stallion's ex-friend, mm. is out here doing an interview. Her first ever interview. And it, it's so funny where, where we're at in society today because in, back in the day, this would be like, she'd be going on Wendy Williams or Oprah or something or Ellen. Mm. But it's, she's going on a podcast and apparently it's a two-hour podcast and it's her first ever interview and she's going to be talking some things and da 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 So... I wonder how much they paid her. Hmm... Because I think I've, I wasn't able to watch the trailer, obviously recording here, but um, someone said something about, mm, that's interesting. So she's saying that um, she's she's claiming this, but then she was begging for me. Because remember she begged, she wanted to try to get immunity. Mm. She didn't get it. And then when she went there, she was pleading the fifth and whatnot, and blah, blah, blah. So someone's like, oh, so all of a sudden now you forgot everything. Because I think part of it is what she claimed that she forgot some stuff. But then now here you are remembering everything. So it should be interesting. And Vaughn says... Actually, you read that's more your band. So let me just retract what I said about Lala. I actually like Lala. I, I shouldn't do stuff like that. Um, she didn't say that. <laughs> she didn't say that. <laughs> when? <laughs> she didn't say that. No, she didn't. She oh said, my she gosh. She said you'd be surprised what people are into. She, she, uh, everybody else under the bus. But anyway, this comment, right? TD, you know there was a there was a channel on Discord called TD After Dark, right? Someone did it. I did it. I created it. Oh yeah. But then, um, Imran said he doesn't want to. Have this madness, yeah, descending to madness. So, what kind of madness do you, expect, you guys expect? Let's be fair, I just learned something new. So, is this the kind of madness people are gonna well, go into? You've seen what Von's on, yeah, I'm <laughs> telling you, he's the one who's 
<laughs> what? He's the one calling for the channel. He's in front of married men. That's he's experienced, isn't it? Yeah, clearly. And he wants to basically <laughs> shed the good news. Yeah, but what, yeah, but in what my mind, though, like what kind of stuff, like. Do, 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 do. That's I think we trial. You will get this. You will come to you. Von, I want to hear. I want to know. I want Von. I, I'm open to ideas. I think you do, and I want to see what kind of what kind of um, what kind of material, what kind of content goes on in there. Teach a few things. I think. I think. I think you should do it. I think you should do it, and then if it gets too wild, just like a thief in the night, take it out. <laughs> take it out. Take it right out. Because in my mind, what are people going to talk about in there? Yeah, I got so much pushback. And I, I only saw it as well. If you're okay. creating a forum, right? Yeah. And I put just below, um, I would say the description, only over 18s allowed in here, right? Yeah. And I didn't think that it would be mad macabre. It would just be I didn't when you're that. chilling at night and nobody's up, you're like, the eyes go up and then you start talking. To you understand? Just the people in there. So we're going to be sexing in there. Yeah, I don't want to see none of that crap. But you, know you, who could they just, are. you could just remove yourself from the from the group if you don't want to see it. Oh, so you have to join the after that one to be part of it. No, I think I put it as no. You could just join. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I got pushed back from him and I got pushed back from Moses. It's a news platform, Brent. Yeah, but they're also married people. Though. Sometimes they're single people live. <laughs> <laughs> married people be in single people's business all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it'd be fun to watch. Can we do it? Bring it back, please. Mm. Let's just see. Let's see what people are like. All Obviously, right. Vaughn take charge. But let's see what people are like. And then if it gets too far, then we'll cut it off. Because I'm very intrigued to know what could be going on in there. <laughs> <laughs> if it was time Shayla was here, yeah, that would have been going off. <laughs> that would have been going off. You know, interesting. you can send pictures and stuff in there, innit? And yeah, but, only, it would only take one person to start. Yeah, but in my it. mind, though, mm. because you know that we all can see it. Oh, yeah, shim. It's Surely shim. you wouldn't. You see, it would have been know like what Von looks like. Look at what Von did. We know what he looks like. No, but it wouldn't be like dick pics, would it? it, it, it my friend, <laughs> you're not going to have your government name as a screen name, right? So you can come in there as anything. No, nah, this is wild. And you can fling anything in there. My naive looking ass. Well, okay, well. You've seen what happens on X in broad daylight. That's true. I do block a lot of people on a daily. Yeah, because I'll be bringing, you know, porn and shit to my sanctified mind. And this is what uh, Manuel was basically saving the rest of us from. Mm. Mm. Fair enough. Of Are you doing the Lord's work? Mm-hmm. I hear it. I hear it. Today, after that, would go off there. Mm. Greek was after for it too, to be honest. <laughs> Why are you joking? <laughs> just Greek is man in his business. So he's man in his business. Yeah, but so was Lala until Ben decided to do that to her. So everyone just minds their business until you know. Okay, well, guys, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate. It. If you guys want a TD after dark, let let Brenton and them know, and then we'll see if it could be way down. But ah, uh, what I thought Von meant a TD show in the evening. That's you said what somebody that. said. Oh, that sounds like me. Stop you just the like cat. me. You just like who said that? D. D. Oh, you D. just like me. No, girl, you just Stop like me, girl. Cat. No. No, they don't mean that. They mean one of your sexting in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they mean. <laughs> That's what these filthy people are saying. Anyway, all the best of parties. Um, please like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. Follow us on our social media platforms the day after TNB on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Big up our researchers, big up everyone that's involved with the show. Big up the lovely male, the baker. We have a guest on, on Monday? We do. Yes. Confirmed? It is. Nice, nice, nice. I'll put up um, a, a card. Picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please repost it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. check out our. Um, it's going to be a very, very interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so check out our page on Monday. No, sorry, over the weekend. We'll have the card up and please reshare it, repost it, all that great stuff. Also, if you want to send your dilemmas in, the number is 075-6484-1073. You can send on WhatsApp. You can text it. Please remember as well, give us as much context as you can so that we can always, always help the way you want to. You can also email. So if you want to email your dilemmas or inquire about the show or feature on the show, our email address is thedayafter at thenewblack.com. Everyone stay safe and um, yeah. I Bye-bye. really didn't expect Black Rob to come. Come out what? Emmanuel in that way, to be honest.
Black oh, Black Rob. Just trying like, to find the opportunity. I was shocked hit. that he said he learns things from me and has people in his life that like me. I said, oh. Mm. I think Black Rob and people like Shocking. Black Rob want, want me to return to my non peaceful element. Listen, to be fair, Iman is a, I've been Iman a lot, you know, because he used to call us stupid back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so about you. I, I randomly remember that the other day and I was cracking up so much so why you like critical thinking and hey. you'd be like well it's just it, if you are like like what? that was code, that was stupidity coded I would hey, it was super I stupidity come I, back every time you said that I feel like that you're, being, you're calling me stupid and I just thought what kind of nonsense <laughs> have I signed up for this is stupid this is why people think it's back chat this is why people think we're out here debating he's, he's never done it to Mags you know because he knows yeah, knows what he's, right? he's, 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 you're hanging fruit, and he raised his voice. And I was like, "Give me, Manuel." This never happened. Oh my god! I, I just didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. Yeah, I was going to say that was been wild. It would have cut the show off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I mean, if people want me to return, hey, don't. For those that call no. up and want to mess around, listen, don't I'll let that man return. I'll remind you. Though. <laughs> listen, he sits right opposite me. I can't deal with that. Hey. I can't. I'm in a very great place in my life at the moment. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this because with that, because unfortunately, you can't pick and choose what you want to come back. The whole pack is going to come back and we're going to talk about misogyny. Not, not polygy- polygyny. Aye. And I'm not doing it. Y'all, I'm not doing it. He's banned. <laughs> it's 2024. <laughs> it's a new year. It's a new month. Mm-hmm. Please. Appreciate the new version of me you have. Please. And because... he, he continues to, it's like an iOS. It's an updated system. Like, keep waiting, <laughs> waiting on the guy, man. Hang in there. <laughs> but yeah, guys, have a nice weekend. Everyone mind your business and no ATMs and that kind of feel the crap. See ya. Peace. Bye. I wouldn't have it personally, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>